Backwards, how is everybody? Okay. Hi, y'all. Ooh, I forgot to put Keithy's little picture to block that. Hi, everybody. How is everybody? I gotta move this. Okay. All right. There, I got rid of that. Okay, y'all. Hi. Hi, you guys. I'm still wearing my weird workout clothes because I just got finished. Hi, slap some makeup on and here I am. How is everybody? Okay. Oh, boiling hot. Hi, you guys. Hi. How is everybody? Oh my God, here I am. Okay, uh, Revelstoke, BC. No, it, Toronto. Arkansas, Ohio, I love doing this. Texas. <laughs> I just got back from the gym. Threw some makeup on over my makeup. I love makeup. Um, yeah, so I threw it back on. Gay Mark in Michigan. And by gay, he means 1920s happy with a vodka gimlet in his hand and a long cigarette in the other at some kind of a speakeasy. That's what gay Mark means. Okay, anyway, uh, New Orleans, BC, North Carolina, Kingston, Ontario, Northern Virginia. Ooh, how pretty it is there right now. How pretty. <laughs> That's what Mark means. That's what he means. He's at a speakeasy. I know what you mean. You had a speakeasy. Um, hi, we. Okay, Catherine from Ohio. Kathy from Ohio. Pardon me. Savannah. North Carolina, South Florida. Oh my God, here I am. I popped up. Northern California, London, UK, Texas. Oh my God. My eyeliner, you guys are hilarious. Um, I use Essence. It's like $2.99. That is what I use for my eyeliner. I will also use Urban Decay, but nine out of 10 times, I'm wearing an espresso brown or a hot chocolate brown from Essence. Is that the one? E-S-S-A-N-C-E, -S -S that one. It's like $2.99. That's what I use. Uh -huh. mm. Quebec. I'm going to look it up and see if that's the name of the company. I think that's the name of it. That's what I use. Is it Essence? I think so. Hold on. I'll tell you since you asked. Eyeliner. Yeah, it is. It's uh, waterproof. It's E-S-S-E-N-C-E. $2.99. So I buy like 10 of them in different colors of brown and I put them and then I buy one thing of Urban Decay in purple to put it over the brown, but I didn't do that tonight because I was, I was doing coral and brown tonight. You have superpowers, excellent. South Carolina, yeah. So it's Essence makeup. Yeah, there, see and you know them. Yeah, it's pretty car coffee. I have my car coffee right here. I'm telling y'all, y'all should get it, yeah. I know, <laughs> Angela, I know, right? Yeah, the eyeshadow was a gift from Libra Lori and it was from It Cosmetics. It was my Christmas gift last year. She bought me a whole bunch of palettes. She always finds the best makeup. Libra Lori, when she's out on the hunt for makeup, oh my God, she does so awesome. Anyway, she did that. No, I don't, Kathy, I haven't really done if, if, my ex-husband wasn't a Halloween person. I probably wouldn't have done Halloween ever. Like, it's not something I did because I'm an adult. So, I know. Don't yell. Um, I did when the kids were little, but meaning, like, I did Jason's first little costume and all of that. But me, myself, I maybe went to one party as an adult. It's not, like, why? I mean, it's okay if you want to. I'm just not. I, well, I, I'm sober. So, like, what am I going to do? Yes, the beauty book by It. That's right, girl. You know it. Isn't that? Oh, the beauty book. So fabulous. She got me that last Christmas and I fucking loved it. She got me the beauty book, which I travel with. And I'm going as Wednesday Adams. Excellent, Beth. Excellent. And um, she got me some other palettes. So great. And then Kenna got me a really great palette. So my son is going to be a Ghostbuster. Excellent. Tell him to come here. When my kids are grown, I'm done with holidays. Yeah, you know... Um, Oh, hi. Okay. Hi, Sloan baby. Killian's mama. Oh, cute, cute babies. I love the babies. You know, it's so funny because they put all of these calendars, all of these dates on our calendars. Um, you know, like it's this and they tell us when to celebrate and how to celebrate. 
So as a Kat Von D, yeah, her, uh, well, she sold out, didn't she, when it was with, what's his name? Um, Jada Pinkett, Jada Pinkett Smith, obviously mind controlled, obviously from a mind controlled family and obviously fucking mentally delusional, but they're triggering her like that. Right. So, um, Montreal, I love the babies. I dressed up as a box of popcorn. Very good. Very, very good. Who else gets excited? I get excited that I get a no, no, I'm kidding. I don't get my own notifications. Um, but you know, it's so funny because it's the car coffee, but it's in, in a mug with my lipstick on it. <laughs> All my cups have lipstick. This is why I live by myself. I don't care. Oh my God, your oldest daughter, Jill, will be 42. Fabulous. Um, yeah, Halloween. I know people celebrate it, but it was always a pain in the ass. Um, not when they were little, little, but like by the time my kids were 12, they weren't really doing Halloween. It's not something... I went to one Halloween party. Oh my God. Yeah, the devious butter tart. You're going as a devious butter tart. Anthony put on a raisin hat, right? And then you'd have the butter tart here and do the little, oh, that would be such a cute costume and nobody would know what the fuck you were. Hello from Burbank. Okay, Erica, hello from Burbank. Is this Erica that I know Erica or which Erica? Because I know many Ericas. Um, Blue face. I don't even know who that rapper is, but yeah, I probably could. Uh, so no, I was going to say they put calendars, they put book, um, like, okay, it's Christmas. We're going to tell you to celebrate if you're Christian. It's this. I don't do candle magic anymore. Mm -mm. Nope. I like, I don't even like candles. I will light a candle if there are ants in the kitchen to get rid of the fucking ants, but I don't do candles anymore. Not since Keith died because that candle broke up, uh, blew up in my kitchen. So I won't do it. I haven't done it since then. Mm -mm. No, 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 no. Uh -uh. Mm. Because a few days before Keith died, I lit a candle to protect my kids and it almost caught my entire kitchen on fire. And well, candle magic, understand magic is the impression that you can manipulate circumstances around you. Magic, another word for magic is manipulation. Um, yeah, well, that's just my opinion. That's just what happened to me. But magic, hi, I can do black magic on you. I can do white magic on you. All it is is manipulation. Things are not going the way I want it to. So I'm going to do this, okay? Oh, I slown iPhone. Whatever, Rebecca. I'm an iPhone here. Um, oh, my God. Thanks, Anthony. Butter tarts. Yeah, so, well, candles in the normal sense to light them, maybe, uh, and I don't do it very often because I have a cat now. Well, you know, I have Tallulah, so like she likes to crawl on everything. So I'm afraid she got her little tail singed. But uh, when you look at the word magic, magic just means I'm a manipulator because I don't like what's going on to myself, to someone else. So I'm going to light a candle, take, take something and try to control a situation. I just think it's manipulation. So at this point, I don't do it. I know you can do whatever the fuck you want to do. I don't care. Do it. And I'm not judging it. I'm just saying that's my own personal opinion. So the only thing I will do is put up guards to protect myself from actions taken against me. That's all. So um, I always have fans on no candles. Yeah, Veronica, you blow the place up, right? Uh, yeah. So yeah, and you can't take away free will. So when you don't like what someone's doing to you, you do have a right to block them. Like if somebody is trying to punch you, you have a right to block, right? But if you're just going to block somebody because you don't fucking like what they're doing, no, that's ridiculous. That's manipulation. So when they use the word magic, I hear manipulation. So uh, put up your guards, pray to God, uh, put salt around you, take your power and take it back from everybody. That prayer is a protection. All of that kind of stuff. So people, and people will still try. People are fucking bitches. They will still try. Britney's book is coming out. Yeah, pretty sure Britney's book is written from her past, like diary entries and all that. And they keep prostituting Britney. So I will not ever buy anything by Britney or for Britney because I believe that her conservators get the money. So I won't do it. Hmm. Yeah, I don't even believe you can stop bad things from happening to you, honestly. I don't believe it. But if you try to do something bad to me and I catch wind of it, in other words, I can see what your intention is because of what you're saying, what you're doing, how you're responding, then I'm going to block you. 
But like if you're going to get on the freeway and start driving, right, and you're like, uh, you have no need to protect yourself because you're in your car and you're just driving and somebody pulls out and slams into you. I don't really think you can stop that from happening necessarily, okay? Now, if someone's chasing you down the street screaming at you, then yeah, you could stop that from happening. But hi, Ashley, Ashley. So hi, Ashley. Um, yeah, I don't know where Amanda Baines is. No, Brittany doesn't get the money. We should stop giving Brittany anything because she's a controlled human being and all us dummies are like, oh, Brittany's book's coming out. We're going to buy it. I'm not buying it. She's a fucking slave. I am not prostituting her or paying for the prostitution of Brittany. Period. She's a fucking slave. <laughs> Do you guys not see it or is it just me that sees this? Hi, Ashley. She's a slave, so I'm just not doing it. I'm not paying because they want to keep making money off her. They would spit on her body, bury her, kick her over, and rob her ass, okay? No, I will not do it. No. Uh-uh. No, no, no. <laughs> no, I don't want the money, actually. No. Um, no, and no, that's exactly right. It's not even that. She's a prostitute for the industry and they all know it. She comes from Illuminati family to Illuminati family on and on. Did you hear that her father's, but no one does anything. People say it's sad. Not one person stands up for her. She keeps getting nailed in court. They drugged her. They did this. What the fuck is that? What the, the what, what? You know, if you roofie somebody in a bar, that's totally bad, right? But I guess you can roofie Brittany because she's not performing like the trained monkey you wanted her Oh, I mean, money goes to you, energy thing. Okay, yes. Oh, thank you, Ashley. I'm like, no, I don't want her money. But <laughs> of course, I read it like that. Um, but I heard that her grandmother on her father's side was locked in an institution and basically committed suicide when she was 36. So this is a generational wound and everybody just let it happen. Like, oh, Brittany's crazy. She's not fucking crazy. If you were locked up like that, you would react like that. If you were put on lithium, you would react like that. She's been toxically poisoned with lithium. Toxically poisoned, right? <laughs> Ashley, you're hilarious. Thank you. Um, yeah, Nat Natalie Holloway's uh, killer, urine van der Sloat, whatever. Yeah, I don't believe him, okay? I don't care what they're saying. They want to end it for some reason. I don't believe what he says. So I'm, I'm but who am I? No one gives a shit. Like that. Grandma on Britney on the Spears side. Yeah, isn't that the dad side? Whichever side it is. I love you more, Ashley. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, I'm sure they are because you're not going to be famous unless you're... Can I just ask the chat? Sure, ask the chat. <laughs> Thank you, Aria. Eric, Aria. I'm looking at Aura up there and Eric and I'm mixing the words up. Um so yeah, it's just really weird. It's just so weird. It's weird that we actually like pay to watch this shit and think it's okay. It's not okay. Yeah, I don't believe you're in Vandersloot at all because he's never told the truth. However, hi, Bobby. I know you just got back. I know you were visiting. You're lovely. You're lovely Vivian. Beautiful Vivian, who I like very much. Um, she's a lovely girl. Lovely like her mama. Um, yeah, so I don't, I really don't. However, if Natalie Holloway's mother is satisfied with that, is Ryan Seacrest, oh, God damn, yeah, he's gay. <laughs> if he's not gay, then I'm not white, okay? So you know what I'm saying. Um, so yeah, I'm like, mm -hmm. Yeah, I was spot on about Eddie Murphy. I, I I know that. That's not actually even psychic. That's something I, that's not even spot on psychic. I was working at the shelter in Hollywood, pregnant with Keith, 94, 1995. Thanks, Bobby, for that. And that's when Eddie Murphy was on our list of people who, let's see the thing about psychos. Yeah, pathological liars. I know, that's what they do. They lie. Anyway, Eddie Murphy got caught back then with one of the kids in our shelter, period, end of conversation. We were told that. I was there. <laughs> so no one's going to convince me. I don't know why he does it. He could be bisexual, gay, straight, both. But yeah, Vandersloot is a lie. I don't believe, I don't believe what he's saying. However, if Natalie's mom does, then I support her choice to let it go, to do whatever she needs to do. 
that's what I support with her because she's the mother of a dead child. So, yeah. And a child that was fucking murdered by a weirdo. Like, huh? You know what? Anyway, um, awful, awful. So I support her as the mother. Um, yes. I, I know. I said I worked with Roseanne Barr at Children of the Night the year she was there. I was pregnant with Keith. It would be 94. I had Keith in 95 and I left in November. I had my baby shower at Children of the Night October with the people, um, the cake with the kids and then the shower right after. So October, November, Keith was born in December of 95. So Roseanne was there. She was married to Ben, that husband, Ben. I guess he was a bodyguard at the time. So she was there. Um, yeah, 94, Beth, there you go. Yeah, so I mean, this is personal interaction with people. She was there somewhere around 95, 94, 95. She was pretty short. She was pretty short. And she wasn't as heavy as she looked on camera. It's because she's short. And the camera adds weird angles is what I think. Mm. Anyway, she, she speaks right right now, Roseanne Barr. She speaks right Um yeah, I feel like what happened to Natalie is not what they're saying. Um, oh, Diddy, yeah, her ex. I was at a party with um, whatever his name is, her ex too, uh, Dr. Drew's party, Tom Arnold, and he got up and spoke there. Yeah, they're all kind of weird. They're all kind of weird. Um, there's a certain neediness to everybody that's in that crowd and... Whatever, I mean, you know, whatever the hell happened, happened. I got to move that door handle there. Okay. Jada Smith is a mind-controlled, strange person, and no one gives a fuck. Well, ask yourself, not just about her. It's funny to say, uh, <laughs> so my camera adds 10 pounds. Absolutely. That's our fucking problem. When I sit at a group of, um, at a group table, I don't take the end because it, that's what they did to Chris Christie when they did the, um, whatever, uh, political things, they stuck the fattest one at the end. So the camera looks to the side. So his representative should have said, his handler should have said, no, 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 no. Put him in the middle, put him in the back, put him on the other side. So, because he was the thickest. So right away, the camera's going to go right in for his little chicken wing leg over there and it's going to expand, right? Oh, the grandbabies are so cute. So cute. Yeah, Jada is, ask yourself why they're pushing that narrative. Hi from Tucson, Arizona, Debbie. Um, ask yourself why they're pushing that narrative. What is that narrative? What What is that narrative? Um, you know, so what? what is with that narrative? What do you think about? We all know what everyone thinks about Marina Abramovic. Okay, I mean, uh, I put, I didn't even see, uh, I think about yeah, no one cares. But do you see what the news does? What you're feeling about Prince? Love his music, miss him. Um, but I know personally about Prince from some of the girlfriends he was with. So he wasn't the nicest person. You know, from what I've heard when it comes to romantic partners and orgies and things like that. Um, let's see. Yes, I did. Don't. Yeah, I did from a long time ago. Couldn't remember what I said. But I don't think Tupac's alive. I know, I know, don't come after me. I just don't feel like he's alive. He might be alive. Well, you know what? He might be alive. But yeah, anyway, I just didn't feel it. Guelph, Ontario. Would we hear about Jada if she hadn't married Will? You, I don't think you would have, no. Aw, uh, Nana, there you go. Nana had fun with Coralie. Coralie is the cutest. Coralie is so cute. And she's a little artist, too, so she's darling. Um, yeah, Prince was super... Do you ever get starstruck? No, no, because I hear the questions they ask, so no. <laughs> um, no, I don't think I've ever been star truck, star truck, starstruck, because I used to see them in the strip clubs, seen them in the bars, seen them in the restaurants, you know. Um, they're just whatever they are, right? So not starstruck, per se. But some are good looking, some are strange. No, not even Lenny. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, no. Um, I just friends with his wife for a long time, for a long, long time. 
uh, Baby Rascal and their youngest son are were friends. And yeah, since the kids were little, I've just known them because you're around town, so you run into people. That's all. I don't know, Rebecca. I never asked that. I'm, sh you know, Prince's wife. She put up with a lot, really. Mm-hmm. What? Oh boy, one time I just missed that. Okay, P Diddy. You know, what can I say about P. Diddy? I mean, why you got to own everything? Clive Davis, gross. P. Diddy, gross. Shaka Khan. Yeah, Shaka Khan. I like Shaka Khan. Khan. <laughs> Jada's driving me crazy. You know, soulmate. Hello, stupid people. Jada, speaking to you. Here's the thing. When you call somebody your soulmate, okay, just please listen. When you call somebody your soulmate, what you're saying is, you have an instant connection to a person that you recognize on a soul level from a past life, of which there are not just one of them. There are many. So soulmate means soul I have met before and will meet again in this life. It's There's not one soulmate. For God's sakes. Of course Prince did. He did that to... Uh, uh, friend of mine who was his girlfriend she wrote on one of the albums anyway he bought her house and then took the key away as she was moving in that's what i'm saying he's not very fucking nice didn't like women much apparently um so i mean when you're doing she didn't let after he sacrificed i have no idea who you're talking about there um anyway elvis is alive and preached at least yeah i know that everybody says elvis is alive Hmm. A reincarnated relationship, Bethany. Brittany, sorry. I said Bethany. I went right to Bethany. Brittany, my apologies. Yeah, a reincarnated relationship. We have connections to people in a past life. Oh my God, you guys. Hi, Kat. Oh my God. Okay, time to put... Oh God, coma. Anthony, you're getting your eyes better. Heal Anthony's eyes. Okay, so how old would Elvis be? I think Elvis would be like 70, 80, 83, something. I don't know. Um, oh, thank you. I just did my nails. I mean, I filled them in. These are acrylic and I filled them. And it's an ombre. And it's coffin shape. I can't do stilettos because I poke myself with the stilettos. Um, let's see. Is it true that Prince lost his baby? He would not. I, I don't know about that. I wasn't in their relationship. Um, so I don't know. Elvis not alive. Come on. Me. <laughs> 87. Okay. Well, at 87, you're completely invisible. At 50, you're completely invisible. Okay. As far as partners, like the only, yeah, I don't know. Who cares? Right. Um, yes. My oldest daughter competes with me. Yes. Past life rival. I think exactly. Um, okay. Late eighties, maybe even 90. He was born in the early thirties. Yeah. I can't remember the exact birth date. Um, so what do you think of Madonna on t Madonna on tour? I haven't watched it. I think good for her if she can go on tour. I mean, but I haven't actually watched her because Madonna, I don't really care for. I don't mind some of her music. Uh, nothing about J Jada is, um, oh, that's funny. Not as brassy. It just depends how it's growing in or what's happening. Jada is, Rob Ford is not, wait, is it Doug or Rob that OD'd or died or had a heart attack or cancer, whichever one. Um, yeah, that's not Madonna. Yeah, but I still don't like, I don't, I don't care who Madonna is. <laughs> I don't like Madonna. Um, Engelbert Humperdinck, what a name. Who fucking made that name up? Just tell me who made that na name up. <laughs> um, what the hell is that name, right? Uh, let's see. Uh, the more I see Madonna these days, I wonder if she's all right. No, she's not all right. <laughs> I'm talking about up here. Um, Rob passed. Okay. Who's Rob? Oh, Rob passed. I'm sorry. We're back to Canada and politics in Canada. Rob Ford, Doug Ford, Rob passed. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. Your uncle passed. AB, right? Video on reveal report about this. I don't know what AB. I don't, I don't like it. I just don't. I didn't care for Madonna like from the mid 80s. Yes, Rob Ford. I get it now. Um, Madonna doesn't like me either. I don't care. I really don't care. She's forced on me. I'm forced like your pumpernickel, Engelberg pumpernickel. I'm forced 
I'm forced to watch these people perform and have their advertising shoved down my face. Have their fucking advertising shoved down my face. I don't like it. I don't give a fuck who you are. I'm not on this planet to be here for your damn advertising. I like Paula Abdul, actually. Um, I like her. I think she's cute. Uh, I had a friend that ran into her. So, yeah. Why what negative attitude? <laughs> what? What's with your negative attitude? But anyway, um, Anderson, right on what? Okay. Uh, hi, Anita. Yeah, so I think that... I don't think she did, Melissa, to answer you. Somebody say Michael Obama. <laughs> so I was at a dinner party with my friends, and then <laughs> I said um, Michelle Obama is going to be the next first female president, right? And they're like, not really, if she's a man, like you say. <laughs> oh, crack, yes. I remember Rob Ford in the crack. Thank you. Big Mike, Marina brought, yes, of course, Marina, I know. I, I, You know what, here's what you do when you see that. None of that actually matters. No one cares, right? Lady Diana was a, Lady Diana was a whack job, but the Brits think she was special. I don't think she was a whack job. I think she, Markham, Ontario, there you go. I know where you are. I know where you are in Markham. Um, yeah, I don't know what to say on that either. Okay, uh, what the hell was I going to say? I don't think Lady Di was a wacko. I think she was 19. She was forced to marry an older man because her father set it up. She was checked to see if she was a virgin. Okay. And, you know, with people staring at her, she was put in a relationship with a man who was a fucking asshole. She had reactive abuse to a man that's a fucking asshole who kept flaunting his mistress in front of her. Right? I, you know, Pamela Anderson, Mark Free, Mark, Jesus, I read it backward. Pamela Anderson, may, Charles is the whack job. Thank you. He's the abusive prick. Um, she was manipulated, controlled, and tortured. And there was nothing wacky about her. She had an eating disorder. She was an abused child and controlled. She went with a narcissistic man who cheated with a troll. No offense. But, you know, I, I don't know what to say. Why didn't the queen just let her son marry who was dick fancy? Do you know what I mean? Why not? Why not just fuck who you want to fuck? Like, why are you listening to your mommy, you big ass pussy? What, because it's royalty and it's protocol? That's actually the queen's fault for that one. It's not Diana's or Charles. Charles hated Diana, had to marry her to make it look a certain way. That's what happened. Mm-hmm. King Tampon. Yeah, exactly. Well, I want to pick on Camila. She's just ugly, but she's never taken care of herself. She wasn't really an attractive woman, and she wasn't really a nice woman. She kept having an affair, but apparently, allegedly, they had a kid. And apparently, allegedly, Diana and Charles had um, embryos. I guess they do it like that. I don't know. And they were supposed to destroy the embryos, but the fucking doctor took one of those embryos and put it in his wife. And apparently the wife has Diana's daughter, Diana and Charles' daughter, allegedly. What the hell is that? Like, you people, no. I know, Camila's a big chain smoker, but I, but she looks, I mean, I, I don't know, I don't know what to say. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what to say about Camila. I mean, if I'm a man, I mean, why are ladies worried about how they look if, if the fucking highest... If you look at Bush's mother, no offense. If you look at, okay, Biden's wife's just strange, whatever. She was cute. But, I mean, if you look at the, the women that these men, that they marry, why is everybody upset about how they look? Who's a gold digger? <laughs> Camila? She, I bet you she can't get a facelift because how old is Camila? Like in her 70s? Isn't she a year older than Charles? So Charles... Charles is like 75, 6, 3, whatever the hell he is. Somewhere in there. So born in the 40s. Camilla's going to be born in the 40s and she smokes. So she probably has a heart condition. Something like that. Um, yeah, I do. I don't. The Tupac, I, I don't know what to say. I, I know what I got and that's not entirely what I got. There were other elements and one was a female. Charles isn't gay, is he, Beard? I don't know if he's gay. He's ugly. He's stupid. I don't know what to say about Charles. I mean, I don't know what to say about people. <laughs> Plastic surgeons can't perform miracles. I don't know what to say about people that think Charles is a good person. 
I don't know what to say. I mean, I just don't know what to say. Um, I don't, I, I, I'm, I'm perplexed by that, but love is blind. Nah, nah, love isn't blind. <laughs> he has to see what that looks like when he wakes it up with it in the morning. Ah, and he's no fucking looker either. So they're probably well suited. But my point is neither Charles, no, a handsome woman, right? Neither Charles nor Diana should have been married, but were forced into it. So I kind of feel sorry for both of them because they both wasted their life. Like Diana wasted her life with a guy that hated her, but married her because it was protocol. And Charles wasted his life. She did and he did. They both did. So I feel bad for both of them. And I blame Queen Elizabeth because I like to do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I just absolutely fucking feel bad for both. That's all. Um, you know, I think I might have done a video. You know, I just read. Uh, no, he couldn't stand Diana. That's obvious. But why make somebody marry somebody? Why do we have arranged marriages? Why is a person not free? So he's he's supposed to marry Diana because, and Diana's supposed to be a fucking hostage in that marriage? Come on. Um, I mean, come on. Right? I mean, why? What would the spirit after the queen? Do you all see the video about, I didn't. No, plastic surgeons are beauticians, not magicians. <laughs> I feel bad. I feel bad. I just feel bad. I did a, a video on Michael Jackson. Um, what I felt really, really upset about Michael Jackson, because I actually like Michael Jackson, okay? I know, I know. I actually like him. And so he had multiple personalities. Multiple personalities is not a mental illness. They love to push this mental illness narrative. And I'm not saying people aren't mentally ill, but they love to push it as opposed to a trauma-based problem. Thank you for that. Pixie Libra, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Um, yes, Princess Di was used like a slave dog, correct, or a show pony or whatever. So Michael Jackson, when you read the autopsy, when you read the autopsy, Michael Jackson was chemically castrated. His family knew it so that he could keep bringing in money, which means he literally was like Britney, a hostage in a different way. And then when he responded the way that he responded, because, oh, Marlon Brando's son, how, do, how would that happen? How would he be? No, I wouldn't think he would be Brando's son because I don't think that that matches up. Mm. Yeah. I love Michael Jackson, but yeah, was he a trans hormones too? I don't know about the trans. It says on the autopsy that Carol Lombard, exactly. It says on the autopsy that he was chemically castrated. He was on fentanyl. He was on um, Profifol. He was on like 30 different medications. Like, what the fuck are you doing? That's no way to live your life. So I'm glad that he died. And that's a funny story. Not a funny story. That's not a funny story. But, um, oh my goodness, I just missed that on the baby. Thank you all for that. Thank you. Okay, wait, you had a question for me. Let me see. Oh, fuck. I can never read these in time. I can't get it to pull down. Ugh, annoying. Um, something about the person you with is interested in having... What are you saying? I can't get it to pull up. I'm trying to get it to pull up. Oh my God. Um, yeah, I feel really bad. Michael's daughter Paris looks like her mother. I'm not sure who her mother is. Um, it, is it that blonde woman? Will Smith has castrated himself. That's one way of wording it, yeah. Jada Pinkett Smith, I mean, first of all, she... Okay, why do some men... Because if you're attractive, you don't want someone you're equal because they do what you do. That way you can hold them hostage. That's why you should always marry equality or it's going to be, it's going to be like a hostage taking, right? Look at young Marlon Brando and Prince Jackson. I think I've got to look up when Brando died. And keep in mind, Brando was 400 pounds and basically wearing a diaper at the end of his life. No offense to Marlon Brando. 
Really? Okay, let's see when Brando died because I loved Marlon Brando. I hate that he was bisexual. I fucking hate that he was bisexual. And then he fucked uh, Sammy Davis Jr. Ugh, I can't. Like, you men think that's okay? No, it's not. Brando was so fucking good looking. So good looking. Okay, let's see when Brando died. 2004. So, well, I guess they could have, you know what? They could have stolen his sperm. Yeah, Richard Pryor, that's what they said. No offense to the diapers. <laughs> yeah, well, he was. He was. I love Brando. I just think Brando's fantastic. Stow! <laughs> Uh, yeah. Michael Jackson's not the father of any of his kids. Let's be serious here. Unless he has kids we don't know about. Those kids are white. They're not black. Okay. I don't care what he did to his skin. Those are not his kids. Okay. I know I like wearing diapers too. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, okay. Another gay man, Cary Grant, another, they're all gay. Like you can't come here and like these movie guys. They're all gay. Um, let's see. Let's see when Prince Jackson was born. And who is naming their child Prince after there's already Prince? I guess whatever. Kids are not, obviously they're not Michaels. Like if any, I, I, you know. Yeah, I know. Cary Grant was gorgeous. He tried to pick up my lawyer friend. Okay. Anyway, so I was told. Okay. Print, no, 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 no. This is a different, this is a different look. Who is this look? He's 26. So, when the hell does that mean he was born, y'all? Uh, after Prince Hall. They name their kids after Prince Hall. Yeah, whatever it is they do. Okay, he was born in 97. He, oh shit, Brando was alive. Damn it. I was trying to disprove that rumor. But yeah, no, how tall is, he's only 5'10". No, I don't see Brando. I see something, but I don't see Brando. I don't know what I see. And who names their kid Blanket? Who the fuck names their kid Blanket? How come his kids were not taken away from him? Because <laughs> you named your kid Blanket, you fucking asshole. Anyway, Michael Jackson, I still feel really bad for him. No, I want to know who names their kid Blanket. Mm -hmm. My children are on my arm. These are my children. Keith. Jason, Keith, Keith, Jason. I have two boys. Then my arms full of my children. Um, okay, yeah, blanket. Who's who's naming their kid blanket? Who the fuck is there? <laughs> Hi, this is my son, blanket. Oh yeah, well I'm not gonna punch you out when I'm in grade school. Um, I mean, what is that? An unbalanced person. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, these weirdos, apple blanket. I mean, yeah. Okay. Fuck tards. Tree, tree, bluebird, whatever. I don't know what to say. I mean, you know, and then I, I just don't know what to say. Paris looks like an avatar. Well, at least her name's Paris. I mean, she's after a city. Um, Yes, I, I know what blanket means. I'm asking who is naming their child blanket and Elon Musk children. I don't even know. Blanket was a nickname. What's blanket's real name? He named his son Prince because he viewed himself as a king. They all view themselves as kings and queens and Northwest. So if we need directions, we go Northwest <laughs> and East South and fucking there and there. And when we go over there, um, there you go. Michael's plastic surgeon, Mary, that feels more right. That feels more right. Um, Apple is a cute name. Mm, it's okay, except that that weirdo mother of hers, because that's not their real name. It's not their real name. I don't know their real name. What is it? Let's see who Blanket, well, let's see what Blanket Jackson's real name is. Let's see. I don't know, because first of all, I'm not going to name my kid that. I like the name Blanket Blanky. <laughs> Okay, Blanket Jackson. He's kind of cute. He's got a serious look in his eyes. He'd have to to beat the shit out of the people that are mocking him. He's 21. He's a cute boy. Um, let's see what they say about him. He was born there. there he's a Pisces. He's a little Pisces. Prince Paris, Debbie Rowe. Debbie Rowe was the mother, right? 
Yeah, it says blank. He says his name's Blanket. I don't know. Uh, he's a filmmaker and a YouTuber. I don't know. I think that that's his name. I think that they named him is Blanket Michael's son. Uh, nickname Blank. Okay, it is a nickname, but what's his real name? I don't know his real name. It's not telling me his real name. They keep calling him Blanket. So it probably is a nickname. Um, don't name your baby prune juice. No. How about calling your daughter Spencer? Spencer's a nice name. Uh, no, change it to Biggie. Biggie. Biggie Smalls? I don't know. He goes by Biggie Jackson. Okay. He seems cute. The guy played Oliver Twist is supposed to be Paris's dad. Don't know who that is. Blanket was a balcony baby. Okay. <laughs> Do you see how weird this conversation is? I have a six-week-old I named Ileana. That's cute. Kanye degrades women. Yeah, well, most men in Hollywood and most men in entertainment and just men around the world do degrade women. Like, how many people, no offense to the men who don't, but, I mean, more than not, we live in a patriarchal society where it's been male-dominated and we have to listen to men tell us when they marry us and we give them kids how they pay all the bills, etc. Well, fuck them. We push kids out. So there you go. Jada Smith is beating Will Smith. Yeah, Jada's kind of the opposite. You're right. I don't know what to say about... Uh, I don't know what to say about um, Jada. Yeah, it's not blanket anymore. It's not my baby. He's my son of Peter. One of my birthday. There probably is. I don't know the meeting though, Joanne. I don't know. There probably is. I did acknowledge the super chats. I said thank you to it, but I can't read what it says on it. That's why I said come back around. I can't read what it says. So thank you so much. Uh, I don't think it would be fair if I tackle you. I don't. <laughs> Jada is a psycho. Okay. No, she's, she's controlled. Um, I think she's a product of mind control, MK Ultra, um, all of those things. Okay, so bye, Dave. There goes Dave. Peace out. My name is not Susan. Okay, Sloan. Pixie was asking you if the person she's in. Hmm. I'm not sure. Yeah, I know he confessed to it. I don't believe it. I don't believe... Jada Pinkett is a man. I can believe that. Um, you know... Give that one some time because I don't think it's obvious at first. I think there's someone else in the way. That's what I think the answer to Pixie, whoever the, the super chat was sent by. That's what I think. My name is not Susan was a song by Whitney Houston. Okay, did you guys hear... Oh my God, what is her name? The woman that's supposed to be Whitney's mom looks like Whitney more so. Uh, devil was the original word, demons. For example, you have the devil in you. Yeah. Blanket's name is Prince Michael Jackson II. But who is Prince? Doesn't he have a kid, Prince, as well? Bill Cosby was gay with Will Smith. All right. Thrown up in my mouth. Ruined it. Ugh. I know Will Smith is gay. I know people he slept with. Um, I do know people that Will Smith slept with. Like, I happened to see somebody, not see, they were, they came to me and I saw. So anyway, I've seen that on more than one occasion. So, and, and now here's the thing in Hollywood, is it gay or are we just having sodomy to fucking rape people? No, not Sissy Houston, another woman. Um, are we having sex just to, you know, control them so they do what we say, right? The prince they all named after Prince Hall. Okay. Will Smith. Okay. I have no idea. I just posted a question and Sloan just, I just posted her question. I did just answer it. I think she has to wait because I think there's another person involved. So if it's not clear, if you have the feeling it's, it's because you're not supposed to express them right now because there is another person involved. Okay. So that's why I feel, thank you for posting that Nola because I couldn't get it to come down. Um, a real mom. I'm looking up Whitney's real mom. All right. And it's not Sissy Houston. Um, what the hell is that woman's name? I want to say it's Tamara. Tamara. I don't. 
Teresa Graves. There you go. I'm like, wait. Ter Ch John Travolta is gay for sure. Um, P.O. Box is 4706, Sunland. 91041. Um, I don't think Dion Warwick is there no not Brittany Houston this is Teresa Graves so Teresa Graves I'm like Tamara I'm making up names Teresa Graves if you look at Teresa Graves she kind of looks like Whitney she looks more like Whitney than Sissy Houston but that's not necessarily true apparently Whitney's dad had an affair with an underage Teresa Graves and Sissy raised Whitney which might explain a whole bunch of shit that went on Anyway, this Teresa Graves, I mean, if you look at this woman, she is Whitney all over the place. Like, look, okay, I'm going to show you her face. Um, Ed and Lorraine Warren, legit. Oh, God, why do I know those names? Someone got to get <laughs> Trudeau out. <laughs> okay, Ed Sullivan. Okay, young Teresa Graves. Okay, so this, um, I'm going to see if they show her face. She's so darn cute. Now, how is she not? This is the woman that had the affair with Whitney's dad. Look at her. How is that not Whitney? Is that Whitney, y'all? Look. Is that Whitney? It's not Whitney. It's Teresa Graves. Got it? This chick. Right? Doesn't she look like her? Yeah. Oh, Ed and Lorraine Warren or psychics that have Annabelle Nolan. Oh, yeah. I have no idea. I don't know anything but doesn't she look more like her than sissy houston so when this girl was underage she had an affair with whitney's dad that's apparently according to history apparently she got him knocked up not really totally really um yes was whitney's mom that's what i heard yeah she looks well if you look at her and then you look at sissy houston no, I see Whitney in this woman. I don't see the other one. She died in a fire, Teresa Graves. I'm sure she did. Teresa Graves sings too. Yes, she was an actress, a singer, and she was underage. And she hooked up with Whitney's dad, whatever, and got knocked up and then had a baby, so they say. And where did that baby go? So Sissy Houston, but that's Illuminati family. That's... Illuminati, right? She definitely Whitney's mom. Yes, yes. Just like Lionel Richie's daughter, um, what's her name? Who was taken from it? The, yeah, they want their fame, so they sell. Oh my God, she's Whitney. I'm looking at her. She's different face here, but it's mixed with Houston's dad. She's totally Whitney. She's Whitney's thin little body, and she's all of those things. And she's not as good as Whitney. Get. Oh, I'm gonna make you love me. Hi. Okay. Let me look. Let me see. Uh, Whitney Houston's father, John Russell Houston, and then you've got Sissy Houston, and I just don't see it, but that's me. Maybe I'm not looking at this. I just don't see it, but, you know, hey, who the hell cares? Um... So it's weird. So would you ever do a Halloween party for fans? Like at a cemetery? No, I would not go to... I don't really like the cemeteries. I get headaches from them. Clone DNA, clone DNA, clone DNA. Thank you. Yes, what they've done to Britney Spears. Um, No, it's not that I wouldn't do readings with the fans on dead celebrities. It's in the graveyard. I'm not really... It gives me a headache. So not really a fan of the graveyard per se. But anyway, not the point, y'all. Not the point, but anyway, uh, yeah, they give you nausea. They give me like a headache because I can feel the energy and it's not always good energy. You know, um, I heard that too. Teresa Gray's also a surrogate, Christy Love. Yeah, see, I don't know anything about her, but I mean, other than I've heard that. Let's see. Hey, can we, Satan is deciding if Jesus is Zeus or they actually attempted to murder. No idea what you're talking about there. Um, yeah, Debbie, just because they're psychics doesn't mean they want to talk to me. Yes, my mother-in-law is buried at Hollywood Forever Cemetery. <laughs> yeah, I've been there. I mean, John's mom's ashes, but her little movie is in there. Uh, 
so we put the we put her there. Yeah. Some people like to work in the cemeteries. I'm not one, but that's not me. I just don't like them. Yeah, I right? I don't know what to say. Yes, get Christy Love. I remember that. I don't remember that, but that, you know, whatever. Um, yeah, so Hollywood Forever, yeah. But I mean, I'm not a fan of cemeteries per se. Lizards are cloning their food. Oh, I get you, lizards. I'm like, why are the lizards doing that? Oh, you guys, you got to look at this. I'm being stared down here by a buddy. Look, you see that? Lou, what's wrong, Lou? Why are you staring at me? You see that? You see her? <laughs> She's staring at me. You see that? <laughs> I'm like, Hi, Lula. Come on. I know. She's just giving me the stink eye back there. Oh, now she's looking at my pencils. Uh, my psychic husband, Doug Graves, in high school. Oh, my God. That must have given him a headache. <laughs> um, yes, yes. I, well... Most people don't stay at the cemeteries. They go on, okay? Um, the word Satan actually comes from adversary and another enemy. I'm sure it does. Um, yeah, Mama Sam and I know, right? What if someone gets cremated? Where do they go? Well, I cremated my son and he's on my arm. I put the ashes on my skin. Their soul still goes, honey. Your body, when you d just... when you die okay do you ever pretend to be on the phone yeah no one cares in public who i am maybe i'll run into somebody but yeah no one no one talks to me i mean come on it's los angeles they're liable to get shot if they talk to you <laughs> no no one talks to me i wear a baseball cap and uh you know wander in and out you're eating salmon francis i already know it um but anyway, I was going to say, when you look at somebody dead, you know they're not there. Their soul has left. So you know that. You can tell. I couldn't smell my Keith. I couldn't feel my my Keith. None of that. None of that. Yes, it can be in many different dimensions at the same time. And it's so weird because, um, oh, I got to tell you the story. So anyway, no such thing as ghosts. Well, there are ghosts. <laughs> But they're not like probably your you saw your mom. Yeah. Yes, Sam and Francis, I knew it. You probably when you're talking about ghosts, you're talking about earthbound souls or spirits that haven't gone in. Sophia Ritchie. She was the daughter of one of the bandmates of Lionel Ritchie, and she was raised by Lionel. Now that's really weird to me. They just give up their children. Um, not really, but I did connect with Keith. So anyway. My friends made a dinner reservation, right? Yes, and God of Light, it does, Damien, you're correct. My friends made a dinner reservation um, downtown, I mean, uh, West Hollywood, wherever it was. Anyway, they made a, um, we made one dinner reservation. They switched it to another restaurant on Melrose. So we went down to the restaurant and I got there early, unfucking heard of, okay, for me. I'm usually late in traffic and I usually can't get out of my car because the parking valets give me anxiety. <clears throat> so I drive around the block and then I have to walk down the street because I don't like giving my car over and all of that kind of stuff. It makes me nuts. I can't handle it. Anyway, so I was able to park across the street, super close, walked, walked through the door, sat at the back table. This young kid comes by and he asked me if I wanted water. And I said, well, I'm going to wait till my friends um, come because I don't know what kind of water they want. Because they offer you three choices. I, I can't make that decision. Tap water, bottled water, this. I don't know. Do people want to pay for bottled water? I don't know. Anyway, so I was waiting. Anyway, Carol came in first and she's like, Sloan. And she sat down. Then she said, I have to go to the restroom. So when she came in, when she left and they went to the restroom... Yes, I go to restaurants with valets, but I very rarely let them in my car. So that's what I'm saying. I park down the street and walk up to the restaurant, right? And so anyway, um, I was sitting there and this kid came up. I say kid because he's under 30. <laughs> A young man came up and he literally, I'd been feeling... Keith all day and he literally said to me um I've never met you but you're Keith's mom seriously I'm in Melrose not expecting this not anywhere I've been and he said 
you know, I'm friends, he's friends with Maddie, one of Keith's friends, Jordan's ex-girlfriend. Anyway, long story, I'm mentioning all their names. They're going to be like, stop talking about us. Anyhow, Matthew, he came up and said hi, and he was Keithy's friend in the restaurant. So I knew that was a message from Keith because I've been feeling Keith all day. I got ready at John's house and I, you know, saw Lila. I, I know the valet's I, yeah, I I know. I just can't stand it. Anyway, I knew I could feel Keith and I felt very sad because there was a box of Keith stuff in John's room, like his little teddy bears, there was monkey and all of that. So anyhow, I knew that was a message from Keith. Then the next day I went out running and I got a cut right there on my chin and I immediately knew Keith cut his chin on the other side. <laughs> That's it. I'm like, my arm bleeds where he's bleeding on the chin where he does yes Bobby seriously the kid came over I am never early number one I'm always Susie's usually late after me okay so I'm second late and sometimes I can't walk in the restaurant because I get anxiety okay so um I don't want to walk in heels I don't want to walk in a public place I get nutty like that so it takes a lot for me to get up sometimes I don't feel right walking in restaurants it just doesn't feel comfortable unless it's like somewhere where I can wear workout clothes and running shoes really quite frankly um but yeah no there's valets at the at the restaurant anyway uh I don't think Keith has an odd um odd birthmark but this little kid Matthew he's not little <laughs> he's like almost 30 but anyway uh to me that's little but he made a point of telling me he was Keith's friend and they all hung out with the same um, you know, group of people and that Maddie and him, you know, were roommates. And of course, so, you know, I just knew him. He's like, yeah, I knew you. And he's, I'm like, how did you know who I was? And he's like, oh, I recognize you. But I also heard your friend say Sloan. So I knew it was you. I thought it was you and I knew it was you. So I was able, okay. I was able to have somebody give me a nice message from my Keithy unexpected because Carol had changed the restaurant. We were going to go to restaurant A and then she sent the message restaurant B. So you have a birthmark on your butt. That's great. Yeah. So it was there from Keith and that's what I thought. I knew that was a message from Keith. And then I knew he cut his face on the other side right here. He mimicked in whatever life he's still like right there. I saw that because I never hit my arm on anything. So yeah, it was very nice. No, I don't use purple shampoo because the bleach sucks up the purple shampoo. I have used purple shampoo. Um, yes, I should. Yes, the cushion tops. Yes, exactly. Um, anyway, that's that was that. Keith has to work really hard to get messages to me because it's, you know, it's thick. What's the bougiest restaurant you've ever gone to? No idea because I... I went to many restaurants in Los Angeles, but I really go to the ones where I can wear my workout clothes, slink in the back and they're not, and I don't drink. So I don't really, I go to local restaurants in my area. So bougie, I'm not really, I mean, I've been all over Los Angeles. My girlfriend's taken me everywhere. I mean, probably bougie, but it's not really bougie. It was like Soho Club. Is that right? Soho Club? Is that what it is? So several of those I've been to, and I don't even know if that's bougie. Um, so yeah, that was a message from Keithy. Kelowna checking in. Mm, I get nervous very, and get salmon. Yeah, I just had salmon on my way out here. But I get very nervous, always have, um, you know, I used to go to country clubs when I was little. Um, so I, I get very... Um, a lot of people and a lot of people like eating properly and stuff freaks me out and just freak me out. Yes, I no, not the human meat restaurant. I have been to a restaurant in LA. I'm not going to name the restaurant, but they had picked. I did have salmon today. <laughs> That's the kind of asshole I am. Um, I went to a restaurant actually with Marina. Marina and I went to a restaurant for her birthday. It was maybe five years ago. It was before Keith died. We were going to go this year too, but we went to the thing with Ed, Ed Bagley. No, there's a restaurant in LA. Um, it's a cannibal restaurant. No, I didn't go to that restaurant, but the restaurant I went to is down like by Doheny and it's packed. 
packed. I'm not going to say the name of it. The paparazzi's all outside. So, of course, I, plot, I park six blocks away because, A, I don't care. I'm just going to slink in through the side. I don't want to pull up in my car. I don't want to be judged. None of that. So I parked way the fuck down the street. And I met my friend in there. She was eating dinner with her two friends or, you know, that. Yeah, not that one. Not the Carnivore Club. But it's a different restaurant. Anyway, I went into the bathroom. And as I was walking into the bathroom, that, be that beautiful woman, Kate Beckinsale. Is it Kate Beckinsale? I don't know if I said that right. Stunning as shit. Stunning. But in the bathroom of this restaurant was a picture of humans eat of humans eating humans. And I'm like, I'm not eating. I'm not eating. I will not be eating. So that was that. Um, we saw Brigitte Nielsen there. Tons of famous people. I mean, just tons of famous people. But yeah, um, so I just, I was like, mm-mm. Very pretty. She's real tall, real... Yeah, I just didn't... I just stayed by the bar and the rest of um, her friends were over there, cousin and stuff. I just gave her a gift and I really didn't get any anything, okay? So, yeah, that's what I can tell you. The restaurant itself does not advertise it that way. But if you have a picture in a restaurant of people eating other humans, I can't eat your food because I don't know what you're trying to say. Yeah, well, she might be 5'7", but she was tall and lovely. I mean, she's probably wearing heels. Um, people eat there. There was a fucking, there was a fucking picture. <laughs> I'm like, nope. So I, I, you know, I don't know what to say to that, but that was a thing, okay? That was a thing. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not even going to have the salad because I don't know what kind of dressing you put on it. I'm not eating there. I'm never eating there. Um, no, I'm saying the restaurant had a picture of people eating people. That's not a restaurant that advertises that. So, um, it gives me the ick. Alan Thick. I did not like Alan Thick when I met him. Didn't like Alan Thick. Didn't like. Yeah, Alan Thick didn't like that. I mean, some of them are really... Yeah, I just didn't eat there because of the picture on the wall. <laughs> it's a very famous restaurant, and I did not eat there. And I didn't want to go, so I was really glad when we didn't go back this year. The owner was really nice. The owner was really nice, but I can't eat when you have a picture like that up there. Yeah, the growing pains, Dad. I hated him. No offense to him. I just didn't like him. Yeah, he was something. I mean, I don't know what he was or whatever, but um, yeah, that put an appetite. D yes, did did he make you thick? <laughs> no, he was just an asshole. But I, looking back on it, I think he was mind controlled. He was like very stone faced, like a stone cold drunk. But I don't know if it was pills or what the hell was with him. So I'm not really sure. Okay, is Ed and Lorraine Warren legit? I have no idea who they are. You keep asking me that. Just because I'm psychic doesn't mean I read about other people, but let me see. <laughs> let me see who they are. I mean, I don't know. Is anybody legit? Are any of us legit? Maybe we're all full of shit. Okay, I'm going to look it up to see. I did a podcast on that particular and people thought I was like, okay, you know where it is then, right? <laughs> yes, Kimberly, exactly. I fucking walked in there on my way to the bathroom and I was like, my, and my friend, this is pretty funny. My friend, Claudette, who I'm looking up these people anyway, and Elizabeth Warren, okay, or Lorraine Warren here. My friend Claudette, who was the set designer for Mad Men and a local girl in, in my neighborhood till she moved out. Anyway, she used to think I was crazy with the shit I said. She used to think I was crazy. She would say to me, you are fucking crazy. And then one day she went to that restaurant on an event for the celebrities and everything. <laughs> and she texted me and she's like, what the fuck did I just see? <laughs> yes, Charlene, I'm not acknowledging it. <laughs> I don't want to get sued again. But Charlene, you know what you know when you know it. Anyway, it was pretty fucking funny. Claudette's like, I'm not going there. I'm not doing it. Okay. 
Ed and Lorraine Warren, New England Society for Psychic Research. Okay, well, they're pretty old now, right? 79. Somebody died in 79. I don't know. Re or Lorraine, yeah, I don't know. She was born April 8th. Wait, that's a long time ago. I don't know who these people are. Anyway, maybe I'm looking at the wrong people. Um, so, yeah, they both died. There you go. Alan Thicke was a vampire. I don't know if he was a vampire. I just didn't like him. Um, they're dead, the Warrens. Yeah, I, I don't know who they are. I mean, are any of us remembered after we're dead, if not by people who knew us personally? You know, whatever. They were grifters. A lot of psychics are grifters. Amityville Horror. Um, let's see. I saw Bridget at the same place. Yes, yes, for lots of famous people. And the paparazzi outside. Exactly. Yes, exactly. But I'm not eating when you have a picture of people eating people in a restaurant. I cannot do that. I cannot do that. I, I can't eat in, I really have to make friends with the chef in a restaurant. I have to make sure that the food's okay. And sometimes I don't even eat. I just go and have a soda and sit with people. Yes, I definitely believe in exorcisms. Absolutely. Um, but I just can't eat in a restaurant that, <laughs> that does that. I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> You know, if you want to trigger an eating disorder, that would be it. So that would be my problem. Um, yeah, uh, it's bacon dressing, they swear. Okay. Oh, God. Oof. No. Um, yeah, I don't eat. I haven't eaten meat in like 30 years. I totally understand. I don't eat meat. But how do you know they're not putting the sauce? What the fuck is the sauce? This and that. A lot of psychics are full of shit. A lot of psychics are not full of shit. A lot of doctors are full of shit. A lot of doctors are not full of shit. Now I know what the sign means. Okay, so like back in 99 through 2001, I don't like eating meat. Yeah, uh-uh, I don't like eating meat at all. Um, I do love salmon. Yeah, there you go. I'm 90%. I'm, I'm a... Pescatarian. I eat fish and I eat eggs and I eat yogurt. So I'm not going to eat meat. Mm -mm. Anyway, there was a picture. Let's see. When we moved up north from 99 to 2001, going on the freeway entrance, there was a picture. And the picture said, I'm off of chicken now, in fact. The picture said the other white meat. And it was a picture of George Bush. I thought it was hilarious, but I didn't understand what it meant. I just thought he was such an asshole that it was funny. Um... Oh, I'm sorry, LaVon. Yeah, that happens. Wait till you learn about vegetables. Not good for you. Yeah, I've heard that too. I eat grilled vegetables, mainly like grilled zucchini, you know, whatever. I do love, I know it said George Bush, the other white meat. And now I know what they're saying when they say that shit. For real. For real. <laughs> um yes fetus in a jar what do you think about nick cannon my boys used to work out at the same gym as nick in burbank he was like there every day um the hell is the name of that gym can't think of it my kids would go to the gym they would see him there i think it's when he was working at the studio um i don't know he's got a lot of kids for one man that's a lot of children but other than that i don't know what to say it's very hard when someone dies. Yeah, I know. It's super hard. Um, George Bush's thighs were his white. Uh, I can't think of his thigh. Who's looking at the man's thighs? <laughs> yes, I know what Bourdain was. Thank you, Brittany. I know what Bourdain was. <laughs> I'm like George Bush's thighs. I, la, 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 la. I can't hear you. <laughs> I can't hear what you're saying. God damn it. No. Um, he was abused and became the abuser. Okay, wait, who are we talking about? I just got totally distracted. Um, you know, Julie, that's interesting. If so, <laughs> Sorry, I'm still thinking about George Bush's thighs, something I never wanted to envision. Um, I would say, if one... Wait, how does it help to claim famous people are cannibals if one doesn't have first-hand evidence? I didn't claim they were, but there is a restaurant that it's not illegal to serve human flesh. It is not illegal to serve human flesh if the person whose human flesh it is is dead and bequeaths their body to somebody. 
so Trump's thighs. I can't stop. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Anyway, it's not illegal, okay? It's not illegal to eat a person if the person donated themselves to be eaten. And there is a restaurant that does that allegedly in Los Angeles. Have I been there? No. But if you Google it, you will find it or I have seen it. So there you go. Just Google Cannibal Restaurant Los Angeles. You guys can Google Tiny Dancer. Exactly. Yeah. So now when bless your food, always bless your food. That's a problem too. When you eat food from people that have ill will towards you, which is why I try not to do that, but Art said to tell you cemeteries. Oh yeah, Art, totally. I get told, I bet Beth, I bet, because he's got the gift, so I bet. Um, hey, Art, do you have a website? Do you do readings? I don't know if Art does readings. He's like, no, fuck you, no. Um, when you die, at least my understand, it is disgusting, but they're trying to make it normal. That's why they slip it into all our food. I stopped eating any of that stuff. I never did eat hot dogs. I've maybe had three hot dogs in my life. I do not like weenies and beans. I don't, I, I eat salmon. I basically eat salmon and that's probably poison. So yeah, no. Yeah, actually blessing your food is good. Beth's husband, Art. So when you pass, this is my understanding, and you have taken your own life, you go through a process of healing your soul energy so that it's healed from what you've done. And then I think you move through the same steps that the rest of us move through. I don't believe you go to hell. I've never heard that. I mean, some people can go to hell, obviously. Um, I love hot dogs with tons of mustard. I can't eat hot dogs. You know what's so funny? I always had this issue with chicken wings. I'm always eating salmon. That's all I do because I have to get like 90 grams of protein in me a day because I'm an old woman, meaning I'm having a hard time building muscle and I'm training so much. So I'm eating protein. So the protein I eat has to have a lot of protein. Okay. Yes. We're in hell right now, Brianna. We're in hell right now. Hell is here. Correct. And correct. So we were all pieces of shit in the last life. We ended up here. Here we are. So what I was going to say is I try to, I don't eat processed food, never have. Um, we sleep until judgment day and then we wake up when we cross over. Uh, you can contact somebody as soon as they passed. I mean, Keith went through me the second that he died when I lay down in his bed that night. And then he came, like he went through my body. I felt Keith move through me. That's all I can tell you. So, yeah, <laughs> we're in hell. This is hell. <laughs> we are in hell. Um, no, he just reads for friends and family. Oh, that's a shame. Canada is hell. Oh, my God, Anthony. Canada, what the fuck is going on in Canada? Yes, my tooth is going good. When I hang upside down on the ropes, there's a little bit of, like, I can feel it's missing. Like, my body doesn't like it missing. I want my tooth back. <laughs> <laughs> yes, intrusive thoughts are from the devil. Mm -hmm. Yes, Canada ice cream is not a necessary food. It isn't, but God, do I love ice cream. So does a bear outside. Do we choose? I don't know that we choose to reincarnate to tell you the truth. I am not sure about that. Yeah, I'm the same with you. I eat, yes, yeah, I'm the same as you. I eat high levels of protein. We're a shit show in Canada. Yeah. China <laughs> uh, to pull me with her for days. Yeah, see, Mary, you might feel the energy of that. Absolutely. I just ordered ice cream. <laughs> Fuck. Good. Eat it. Enjoy it. No, you know, Jody, I don't believe I'm a volunteer here. I can't get on board with that. There's a lot. <laughs> no, I'm not a fucking volunteer here, okay? I know myself. I am not a volunteer here. I would never choose to follow the rules on this planet ever. I d do you mind, Lou? What are you doing? What you doing, Lou? She's wrecking my paper here. Hi. Okay, take a look this way. Ooh. Take a look this way, y'all. Look what she's doing. Lou, what you doing? What you doing? Saying hi to the people? Are you all over my paper? What are you doing? What are you doing, Lou? 
You had your dinner. I made sure. Look at little Lou. Yeah, she had her dinner, y'all. Oops, she's all. <laughs> As, thank you for that. I, I feel somehow we have been told that I know she wants attention, but we cuddled. We cuddled all day. We cuddled me and her, me and Lou, um, whose ne new nickname is Lou Baton because, you know, she's cute. She's loafing around. Yeah. She's so sweet. She's going to visit a friend tomorrow and she's going to get her nails clipped. I just covered her ears. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, yes, I felt go. Yes. Yes, that is birth and his death. Correct. Yeah, she's really cute. She loves to sit on all my paperwork and my computers and my this and my that. But I don't know that we all choose. There's a lot of new age stuff, which I feel is partially right. Obviously, none of us can know if it's right. Truthfully, nobody you go to can know. And that brings this up. Oh my God. Ooh, peppermint stick ice cream. How much do I love that? So... Please do not book a reading with me. This goes out to a particular client and I'm not going to fucking say her name. So don't be getting all fucking aggro on me. So after she got her reading, she emailed me about, thank you for that. Thank you. She emailed, um, she emailed me about her reading and she said she only got one psychic message. Okay, so here's what I wanted to say. When you have an intuitive, a psychic, whoever, doing your reading and you ask a question about a certain thing, you may think that it's not psychic what's coming through, but it may just be psychic coming through in a very normal way of speaking because that's the way the delivery is done. So, you know, uh. And then she said some pretty shitty things on the email. And I was like, you're a shithead. But I didn't write her back that. I just said, you know, whatever. Um, anyway, yeah, I don't know what to say. So if you're going to book a reading with me, number one, if you can't afford it, don't do it. Because, <laughs> no, these people go out of their way to fucking write me these fucking shitty emails. And whatever. Um, I know it happens. It should say on it to call. But anyway, what I was going to say, say is if you bring up how much money you make as an adult fucking person after you've had a reading and you tell me that you don't make enough for the reading and you didn't get what you wanted from the reading. First of all, you talked to me for 70 minutes. I checked the phone bill. Secondly, you're um, no, I don't write. It's not, I don't do it for entertainment purposes. I actually been doing it 40 years. So first of all, and if you're saying I'm yelling at you now, I'm not yelling at you. I'm fucking telling you straight up. And if you don't like truth, but if you're going to tell me you don't make enough money to book a reading, to try to make me feel guilty. Okay. If you try to make me feel guilty because you had a reading, I, that's not me on Yelp. I don't have a Yelp out there. That's somebody else under my name. That's not me. Um, I don't put up any way where you can give me, uh, where you can leave me reviews. I think that's ridiculous because you're at the mercy of someone. If you say the wrong thing, say the truth, say something they don't like, say something they imagine in their heads, they're going to write shit about you. I think people are really fucking stupid. That's not me on, on you, on, um, Yelp. I do not have an account on Yelp. Anyway, um, she's like... <laughs> call the name out. No, I'm not going to do that. But she's like, I only make this amount of money and I paid this amount. Well, here's the thing. If you fucking know that you don't make enough money, don't get your hair done. Don't go to a restaurant. And for fuck's sakes, don't buy a psychic reading. By all means, make a choice to keep your money to yourself. If you pay for the reading, that's you. I'm not going to ask you like a five-year-old, can you afford this reading? I'm not going to do that. You have made the choice to have a reading. You have done that. And if you block me with your nonsense about this and that, you're going to get what you get. If you ask me a question, for example, some people will ask a question. How do I get out of a relationship? Like a marriage, right? I've asked the same question. How do I get out of relationship this way when I'm legally married? Well, when you're describing what you're describing, then I'm going to have to say, maybe you should go talk to a lawyer so you know your fucking rights. 
That doesn't mean that's not psychic. That's also added to the other information you're getting, okay? Like, why would I tell you fairy tales? I just don't know. Anyway, these fucking people, some of them do that. It's really passive aggressive. You should say at the time, I don't like my reading and then I will hang up. And if it's within the first 15 minutes, you can have your money back. But if you stay for 70 minutes and then bitch me out two days later, that sounds like a you problem. Anyway, fasting will help. Yes, fasting will help. Okay, fasting will help. So no, I would never call her out because this is a personal thing, but I'm just saying, <laughs> no, I don't, I'm not even saying that. I'm just saying that, if you get, like, that's like me going to an expensive dinner. I may tell my friend, shit, I couldn't afford that, right? After. But if I walk in there and I sit down and I order the fucking food, even if it's not what I want, I made the choice to do that. So therefore, I'm not going to go up and start screaming at the maitre d' or whoever and say, you know, I couldn't afford this. What are you, five? You're a fucking grown-ass adult. Anyway, I do love intermittent fasting, to answer your question. I Yes, I do. I'm trying to do that right now, but I'll probably eat later. Um, yeah, so I like, I, I just saying, I get so many, like, ridiculous, some people say some fucked up shit. Um, yes, the frequency is. They're, well, they're idiotic. They're no common sense. Not my problem if you can't afford it. Why do you think you're entitled to have a reading? If you save up for it, then that's a you thing. You paid for it. I, I don't know what to say. Anyway. And they were rendered if she doesn't like it. Yeah. Well, no, she said it would she said it was only one psychic question answered. I guess that depends on what I said. I can't remember everything I said, but whatever. Um, anyway, yeah. So gang stalking is an earthbound thing. It's a bullying type of thing. Yeah, uh, let's see. I looked up a reading from you. I didn't get a booking. Yeah, you don't have to get a booking. I don't go where I want to go all the time. You don't see me in the fucking Europe right now. Uh, trust me, I've been in some. Yeah, I know. Some people are strange. <laughs> um, I don't know what happened to the Malaysian plane. I have no idea what happened to that plane. None. I'm assuming it probably didn't even really exist. Excuse me. That's what I'm thinking. You know, and I'll tell you something I just figured out. You remember that show Black Mirror? Uh, I think if your soul is captured here and you're forced to do another life. Yeah, I'm not going to do another life. I'm sorry. <laughs> Bye. Not going to do it. Um, why I think the New Age community, I just went off on a tangent again. Why I think the New Age, oh, and I got to end it by this. She'll know who it is. After this whole thing, after this whole diatribe of whatever, which she's entitled to her feelings, which is why I won't mention her name, but she will know who she is by me saying this. You guys won't know who she is. And then she left it at the end. I just have to say this because I was like, I was like, wow, that's outstanding that you said that. Like I fucking. So she says, <laughs> she says, I don't have my mic right now. I have my pen mic. And she says. She says, okay, I would like you to marry my dad. This was so, like, so fucked up. I mean, it's nice she wants me to marry her dad. But she said, I would like you to marry my dad. He's not only wealthy and handsome, and I'm thinking to myself, this is fucking great, right? He's wealthy and handsome. And then she says, he's an alcoholic narcissist, and he's 20 years older than you. Hard to resist. And then she goes, I hope you... You take this message in the spirit it's meant. I'm like, you're a fucking bitch or you're deranged. <laughs> I know, that's what she said. That's what she said. That's what she fucking said, you little vicious bitch. Um, <laughs> this is what I was like. <laughs> Fuck off. Um, I just thought that was hilarious. I was like, I started laughing out loud. <laughs> I'm like, are, yes, there are monitoring spirits. Yes. Yes. That's what she said. Okay. She was, yeah. She, well, because probably her dad fucked somebody her age and like maybe she wanted in on that action. I don't know. But I was like, listen, you stupid bitch. Because that's what I think of you when you say shit like that. Never say that to somebody. Okay. Never say that. You're not going to win. <laughs>
<laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. Anyway, that's how she ended it. I was like, yeah, I think I'll marry a heroin addict. Why don't I do that? <laughs> Whatever. Anyway, she knows who she is, but <laughs> I'm not going to say. Um, yeah, I was cracking up, though. Of course, but she was trying to get it's it, what it is. That's a passive aggressive energy because you don't like what I said in the reading. And you're so immature that you can't process the fact that maybe you should... I don't know, take whatever you could get from an Aries heroin addict. Yes, you forgot to add that. Um, maybe you should, <laughs> it's petty and mean. This, of course, explains the whole reading. But anyway, um, <laughs> I just couldn't, and John was sitting next to me, so I'm reading it, and he looks, he goes, that's a dig at you. I'm like, the fuck it is, isn't it? <laughs> We're cracking up laughing. Um, no, I don't think she was a relative. It's so passive aggressive. You so are so passive aggressive. Like what people have to put up with. Um, you're really, yes, I'm, no, not Marina Abramovic. My friend, Marina Anderson. Not Marina Abramovic, Marina Anderson. She was married to David Carradine, that Marina. Not Marina Abram. It's more than one person has the name. Um, you will not receive it. Yeah. <laughs> She's an aggressive. See you next Tuesday. <laughs> See you next Tuesday, bitch. Um, I'm like, whatever. Uh, no, it's really funny because you can't really... When you say shit like that to people, you show how stupid you are. It's fine if you don't like your reading. The rest of it is fine except saying you can't afford it, then you shouldn't have done it. That's completely on you, completely on you. But other than that, like if you don't like what you read or whatever, right? If you don't like that, that's, you can completely tell me that. And you can definitely put your notes. I respect that. But if you're going to say like a whole bunch of other bullshit with it to try to be a fucking asshole, then you're going to look like a fucking asshole. And it's a you problem. And that's why you have a you problem. Um, so yeah, I don't know what to say. Um, but anyway, getting back to it, I want to cross my eyes with some of the people I read, right? Just like, fuck off. I was like, what? <laughs> yeah, I mean, she should fuck her father, right? I mean, I'm sorry. What are you putting it on me for? And why do you think you have control over who I should be marrying? And who's getting married again? Said me never, ever, okay? So, like, why would, it, why would I need to get married? A, I don't want to. And B, why would I marry anybody you want? And how do you know my expectations for marriage? Oh, that's right. You were being a sarcastic piece of shit. I got you. Okay. Anyway, um, <laughs> my requirements for a man are when I feel them in my heart. So I was married 36 years to my husband because I loved him. Okay. Well, the last several since Keith died, we were fighting. I still see him as the father of my children I still treat him the best I can treat him without going after him and, you know, whatever. But I tried to maintain something because I loved him. It didn't have to do with his age. And if you're trying to imply I was a gold digger, I pay the bills. So not a gold digger, bitch. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, not going to say that. But anyhow, so I don't know... <laughs> fuck anyway getting black to, she doesn't even matter I just thought that was absolutely hilarious because she was actually attacking me for marrying John but I was 20 and John was well I was 21 turning 22 actually but 20 when I met John um and John was 42 okay so when I married John I wasn't really aware fully of the context of marriage, but I knew I was going to have children with him. So I went with my gut instinct and had my children that I saw. So we do that sometimes and sometimes it doesn't work and sometimes it does. But either way, like when you speak that way, it always shows who you are. <laughs>
<laughs> that's what it shows. Um, so it shows that it doesn't show anything else. Like, yeah, I know, right? It's like, okay, it says deuces. <laughs> I'm sorry. If, I was literally beside John when I'm reading this. And he's like, the fuck is wrong with her? She's fucking out for you. He's like, what the fuck did you tell her? And I'm like, not what I should have told her. Um, <laughs> oh, God. I know, right, Melissa? It's probably John. She behaves like John's daughter. Exactly. <laughs> Another one. That's why I said, you know, you can always date your own dad. I mean, I don't think you should worry about your boundaries over there. Um, anyway, yeah, hilarious. But... Um, yeah, I mean, it was just really funny. But here's the problem. Okay, that show Black Mirror, I think it was Black Mirror, where, um, what's his name? Opie's daughter was in it. What's his name? Ron Howard's daughter. Do you remember? Um, yeah, Beth, you did that. I stayed the whole way because that's what I did. Anyway, um, I'm surprised she didn't say something about Keith dying and how I caused it. I mean, she could have added that to it too, right? Um, <laughs> you fucking bitch. Anyway, uh, so when you're looking at Black Mirror, when you're looking at how uh, it's uh, Ron Howard's daughter, whatever her name is, she's in the movie and she's going, trying to catch a ride, trying to hitchhike, and they pull up a social credit score and they're like, we can't put you in the car. And then this woman stops and she's like, why did you stop? And the woman says, because somebody, I cussed somebody out and I thought it was really... Um, yeah, well, I do, de I do defend John. <laughs> I do defend John. He's the father of my kids. Regardless, I chose to have children with him. It, I chose to have children with him and I have a child alive and grandkids. So yes, I'll behave accordingly. That's what I do. And I behaved with class all the way along after my son died. Bryce, ha Bryce Howard. Yes, her. Um, I tried to behave the way that Keith would want me to behave in his eyes because he could see me. And I tried to behave well enough for Jason so that I could, I'm not saying it didn't drive me crazy, but that's how I tried to behave after my son died so that I could um, keep things. And there you go. But anyway, Bryce Howard, she is <laughs> a wood chipper. <laughs> Michelle, yay, Michelle. I love you, Michelle. That's Skull Michelle, right? S-K-U-L-L. -L. Skull Michelle. You know what I'm talking about. Crystal Skull Michelle. Um, okay, so when Bryce Howard, I've said this 5,000 times, she's picks, this woman picks her up hitchhiking and they have public scores and they're reading the scores, right? So listen, listen, you guys, every time we do something, thank you, Bobby, Gigi, <laughs> Gigi's here. Um, when you, when you write a review, I refuse to write reviews for people now because they want me to write my reviews online. When they know Yelp and other places, actually you can't get a bad review off. So if your ex-husband, ex-wife decides to go on to Yelp and fuck with you, yes, Michelle, I recognized you. Yes, I look forward to it. So if somebody, maybe it was Twilight, I don't know what I was doing, what I was watching, but I thought it was Black Mirror. Anyway, the credit scores are your social scores. And yes, and they're mandatory in the movie. And so don't you understand when you have Yelp, they sit and they write shit and then you are judged based on that? That is why that Yelp is not mine. I don't open, I don't ask people. And when they say, can you do a survey after? I'm like, no. And they're like, we get paid when you do. I don't care. It is not my job to judge you at your work. The only time I'm going to judge you is if you try to kill me or you're extraordinarily over the top amazing when I'm needing something. But other than that, I don't know what to say. It's not my job to sit there and, and answer the ratings after I talk to T-Mobile every single time. Can you please write that? Now, if I do a surgery, if I have my wisdom tooth pulled and go to the dentist, I will write about that if I feel inclined because I will describe the work of that person. I don't need to describe the work of the T-Mobile person in India or wherever the hell they're calling from, Indonesia. I don't need, they do do that with doctors. They do. I mean, like, you know, they write on, um, like the dentist, they have um, Google ratings and stuff, 
But the problem is, okay, the problem is with Yelp, they literally will not take something down. They charge you a, um, yeah, they charge you a, uh, what do you call it? Um, extortion fee to get it off. And so if you have somebody who fucking hates you for whatever goddamn reason they hate you, <laughs> you're like this woman who wrote me that I should marry her alcoholic, good looking, wealthy father who's 20 years older because I need to be beaten again. Anyway, um, yeah, the pain is gone, Mindy. Thank you. It actually is. I don't like that hole back there. I want to decorate it or something. Anyway, when you do, when you, when you do that, you can have somebody like her writing a bunch of shit and they actually do that on, oh, I'm so glad it's gone. Thank you, Lisa. I'm so glad it's gone. I was like dying. Um, I was like moving and I'll be like, oh my God. Um, if you eat a hot piece of food, oh my God. Anyway, you just have to know that when they write these ratings, you don't know who you're listening to. So I kind of look at pictures. Yeah, a lot of women hate other women. I know. It's just so ridiculous. But I'm not saying she liked her reading. I'm not going to be 100% right. And I'm not going to pretend to be 100% right. Why would I pretend to do that? Okay. And some people don't even believe what I do. And that's their prerogative. And you may not like your reading. And that's your prerogative. However, you don't get to insult me and you don't get to whine about what you make per hour because I didn't force you to buy the fucking reading. I charge a time frame. It's what I charge. Whatever hairdresser charges, my hairdresser, I don't go yell at her after she's bleached my hair. Even if the bleach doesn't, she doesn't think I was psychic in the reading, which is possible. Maybe I wasn't. But even if the bleach doesn't look right, you know what I say? Can I make another appointment? Can we go lighter? Or can we add some dark to it? That's what I say. And I pay them again. Am I excited about that? No. Sometimes I've done my nails. It's cost a shit ton. I've gone somewhere else other than my usual girl. I don't like it. And I have to double pay. That's kind of what you have to do. You know, I mean, that's what happens, right? Yeah, that's exact. Correct, Allison. So... Yes, yeah, psychics get what they get. Also understand, this is like an important thing to say as well because when you're looking at um when you're looking at psychic readings, if you call me and you're in any kind of a toxic violence situation, I'm going to give you actual advice that you maybe say isn't psychic along with what I'm getting, time frames, this and that. And she even quoted the time frame I said wrong. She said she would be completed with a certain thing and that wasn't the case. I said you would start to take care of this issue in that time frame. So, oh, thank you, India. Thank you. So it's, if I have the knowledge, it is accurate for me to give you practical, logical steps you can take to get out of any kind of situation whether it be toxic or you're being bullied or stalked or whatever the situation is, right? So what's the problem with that? What is the problem? They don't, and she said that too. That's a very interesting, she said, why would I call you if I wasn't stressed? And I'm like, um, a lot of people call me for readings just because they want updates on their astrology and they want that. They don't always call me in distress. I have calls with people who call weekly who are not in distress, okay? Yeah, I don't know what to say. But anyway, um, my, name's, my name is copywritten, not copywritten. Um, what is it? Jesus. Trademarked. She can't really use my name when it's my fucking name. But anyway, it's trademarked. Um, that's why I did that. So that you couldn't. So you could actually be sued. Um, problems is mediums are just channels. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, you don't know why. But not everybody's calling because they're panicked. A lot of people are. But that's not the only reason most people are stupid. No, mo people call me. They want, some people just want to go over one thing. Um, yeah, my name is my name. Exactly. So some people want to do this. You know what I mean? I want readings from you for a change, uh, from a change from arts reading. There you go. And you're not in crisis. There you go. 
Yes, she does need a therapist. But while she's there, I've never been accused of giving the wrong advice as far as life advice. I'm not crazy. And I understand what you're saying when you're in a toxic, abusive situation and what steps you need to have happen in order to find information to move forward. Because I understand everything is a choice, right? Yeah, whatever. So you're paying for my time either way. And if you have specific questions and ask the specific questions, don't yell at me after that you didn't, right? So anyway, not the point. But my point is with the reviews, when you look at stuff, I've been to places and there's places that are fabulous. And I see people rip these people apart. And I'm like, yeah, this is somebody's, this is somebody's fucking husband or wife here doing this. No, I never did sign up for it. So it's just, it's kind of weird. There is some psychic on there. There's a, I think it's Psychic Bella. That's not me. Bella is my last name. I'm not Psychic Bella, okay? Um, yeah, I think, I'm just looking it up here. Oh, yeah, this bitch, Sloane Vidara. She literally took my name, this bitch, in Hollywood. Um, and, oh, and <laughs> just want people to know this person is not the same as Sloane Bella. So somebody went and wrote that. She wrote it and she's online, but that's not me, okay? That isn't me. Um, yeah, that's not me. So yeah, anyhow, and I don't ask people for money and I don't try to, real names on Yelp would fix everything. Absolutely real names with a driver's license. Exactly, exactly, exactly. So there's a lot of people that copy my name. They're not me. They, you should have to show your driver's license, right? Um, Allison, don't say never. You could afford a reading. You just maybe can't afford it with this psychic. You can find another one. There's all kinds of other psychics, okay? There's all kinds of psychics out there. Not everyone has to charge whatever they charge. There's like different hairdressers. Hairdressing can go from, I have hairdresser friends that charge 600 to put bleach in and 60 and 80. And, you know, you've got your pick of where you want to go and who you want to talk to and for whatever reason you want to do it, right? Um. Yeah, I was so rude, you know. Yeah, no, you're, I don't think you're rude. I don't know what you said. But anyway, um, so uh, oh, this one. Are you talking about this one? Susie gave this to me at dinner. Look, this is a little mushroom necklace with the turquoise beads. Isn't that cute? Yeah, Susie brought us all gifts at dinner. She's so sweet. Um, she has a jewelry line, uh, Rossmore LA, and that's her little company, not little, big company. That's her company. And, uh, she just made these little necklaces. She gave me this. Some of the girls got pink. I love the blue. And so she made me a yellow little mushroom. I don't know how much this is. She, it's a gift. I didn't ask how much it was. <laughs> how much is that Susie? No, I didn't ask her that. She gave me a lovely gift. When someone gives me a gift, I don't care how much it is. You can draw it. You can give it to me, you know, whatever. Um, yeah, so it's really cute. It's because everybody's in the mushroom phase. And she's like, I wasn't sure if you wanted this color mushroom. And I thought you were a yellow mushroom. And she's right because of the sunflowers. Somebody sent me a sunflower bag today. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, there. you know what? Here's another thing. When you get psychic readings from people, yes, yeah, so I've I've had a lot of readings. Some of them haven't happened. Some of them have happened. Um, I don't think it's an African. This comes from my friend's company, so I don't know. Wait, Bruce who has dementia? Bruce. Oh, Willis. There you go. <laughs> like, wait, who? Um, no, I meant for readings, not the gift. Oh, honey, I don't, you have to go to my website and look at that. I And that's another thing. Oh, my fucking God. Okay. For the love of everything that is peppermint stick ice cream, do not, do not go to anybody using my name who is not me. I have stiff person syndrome. <laughs> what I saw that, what is that? Anyway, sorry. Um, I, I book readings off my website. Unless you're a client that I've had for 20, 30 years, then you know how to reach me. And I will talk to you privately and you can Venmo me in that, okay? Yes, I'm in a tank top. It was kind of cool today, but I went moonlighting. Yeah, I went um, to the gym before here. So there's a lot of people that are 
asking people to send them money. And this box, sorry, you guys, my pillow, I'm short, pillow, blah, blah, blah. A lot of people asking them to send money and they're saying that they're me. They're not me. They're not me, okay? <laughs> Still, I'm sorry, I just read stiff person syndrome. What the fuck is that? Anyway, here's the thing. When it comes to Zelle, okay, when it comes to Venmo, I'm at Sloan Bella. When it comes to Zelle, it is my phone number that I book for my readings, okay? So it will show up at your bank who you sent the money to. Like, you will know if it's my bank account. It isn't my bank account, so don't come at me for that. I'm not asking. I book, You can book on my... Yes, Bobby, yes. Yes, Bobby, yes. Yes, and so is that's what stiff person is. Psychic parties, yes. You used to do the psychic party to stiff drink. <laughs> um, yeah, so... Yes, I would go on Coast to Coast again, absolutely. I would go with Richard. I love Richard. He's Canadian. Richard is my buddy. He's because he's fellow Canadian and he has two boys. Um, <laughs> Amanda, Amanda's dog is scared of his own body odor. Um, Zell is the best way to, yeah, no middleman. Zell, you can do that. But, but see, they're zelling the psychic person syndrome. Exactly. These people are zelling to an email. Oops, she moved that to an email that isn't mine. My emails all say Sloan at SloanBella.com. They're not, you know, Sally Sue 972. You know, no, that's not what that is. And so don't send it there, please. For the love of God, I'm begging you, don't do it. Yes, Art Bell. I think he went somewhere else, right? Isn't he on another one? Yes, I'm on Richard's Strange Planet show coming up. I'm on that. Um, he's going to email me. I just filmed it like two weeks ago. Um, but yeah, so yes, from Chrome or something like that. It has to be, right? It, just think about it for a second. So these people keep doing this. So on YouTube or on Instagram, it's just me. You'll know it's me. You're talking to me now. I even have people asking me when I'm doing the astrology readings if it's really me doing them. If I'm recording it, you'll hear my voice. It's definitely me. Ow, don't bite Keithy. She just bit me and she bit Keithy. Um, don't do that, Lou. She's really mad. Um, <laughs> Art Bell died. Yeah, oh, Art Bell died. Who's the other one? Um, George Norrie. Sorry, I'm thinking of George Norrie. Um, yes, not Art Bell. Pardon me, George Norrie. He went to Gaia TV, I think. I think. Tallulah just bit Keith on my arm. Not in real life. But, uh, yeah. So, she can't bite Keith. You can't do that. You can't bite Keithy. You can bite the other arm. Just don't do that. Keithy does not like when you bite him. Yes, our bell died. Exactly. Um, <laughs> uh, Melissa, I can't right now. I have to actually look into that. I can't think off the top of my head because it's been years. I just got a cancer pinch. Oh my God, right? Got a little cancer grandbaby, got a Gemini grandbaby, got a little cancer cat. Always had Aries pets. Now I got this little cancer. I call her Jason for short. Um, no, George Norrie didn't die. The other one died. <laughs> oh, Lily, what a cute little kitty name. Yeah, George Norrie... Um, I want to say Gaia TV. That is what I want to say. But I could be wrong. I uh, could, you know, I'm a cancer. Yeah, I know. She's she's biting. I went to pat her and she's like, let's see if you're, hold on. If, if you're cursed, wait. If you're cursed, can false information be delivered in a reading? Absolutely. And here's another thing. Honestly, to be very truthful, if somebody is channeling, so let's look at all the people that channel, like the new age, okay? Um... Aw, oh, two weeks, grandbaby, so cute. So let's look at, I know, I hate it. She should come after the Keithy. She never go after Jason, it's just Keithy. So no. Um, when you look at psychics, if they are mediums and they're getting their information, understand everybody who gets their information may not know where they're getting it from. I mean, is your guide your guide? Is your dead grandmother really your dead grandmother? You have to ascertain from your own experience where the information is coming from. 
not just assume that because they're your guides that every guide steps in. There are assholes out there, just like there are in life. There are people who will try to fuck you over at the grocery store, right? And so when a psychic or a medium works, they have to understand. Yeah, Gaia TV, I think that's it. They have to actually understand the, the tempo of the information they get. So they discernment. Thank you, Camby. Discern, discernment for their own information. Everybody does. Because, you. I mean, you're going to get information, right? Oh, which of, which of the Claire's are me? Okay, I'm totally um, clairsentient, which means I feel or empathic. Not a high empath. I just literally feel. So when you ovulate, I ovulate. Um, when when somebody dies, I feel their death process. And this happened where I've been alive in day-to-day -day life and felt other people dying, the Anna Nicole story, because she was a client of mine, not because she was a famous person, but she happened to have been a client of mine at the time that she died and prior to that. But I have that... Um, so I felt her death. I, I will often live through people's death experiences prior to them dying. So I will see it and I will feel it and always have. Uh, I'm Claire audience, so I just say it. I don't need any tools. I can use tools. I love tools, but I don't need them. I don't, I can be walking around and someone can ask and I get it, you know, the answer. Or if I don't get it, I don't get it. Um, Mermaid, I don't believe every, we do a live every time with the same astrology. Wait, we, do we, oh, do we live every lifetime with the same astrology? I was like, huh, what? Um, no, no, you're going to change because you're going to change energies, right? You're not always going to want to focus on the same thing. Now, you're, it, it, there are certain things you can look to in the chart to see, yeah, clairvoyant, clairaudient, and clairsentient, I do dream things, um, but I feel things and I get repetitive thoughts in my head. Like people can say whatever to me, but I hear what you're really thinking. At least I feel I hear what you're really thinking. <laughs> so whatever. So I, I feel like I understand things. And that's a funny story I was saying about Michael Jackson. So Jason had a slumber party. Mary and Anne were there. Joseph, those were our neighbors. Joseph was there, Keith and his friends were there, and um, no, I don't think anyone's ever told me where their remains are specifically like that. I get an idea. I mean, I've seen certain things. Sometimes I will walk into it like in a different dimension and see it. Um, I won't always see exactly, and sometimes it's not, 100% the way that it comes out because you have to interpret it. And sometimes I'm just off. That's it. Hi, Eric. How are you? There's Eric. Um, been doing any music lately, Eric? Uh, but what I was going to say, so Keith, Jason and Keithy had their, or it was Jason's party and Jason's friends. Anyway, I was hiking and it was about six months before Michael Jackson died. And out of the blue, outside of me, I heard Michael Jackson's going to die. Like somebody was talking to me while I was running. And I was like, who said that? Like it was such a booming voice. And then I said, when? Six months. So when I ran in the door from running, I walked in the door. I said, Michael Jackson's going to die. I think I said, I don't remember if he was 51 or 52, but I believe I said he'll be 51, something like that. Whatever I said, Jason's friends still remember me saying that. Okay. So it's pretty funny. Um... I just heard it. Anna Nicole's death experience. Now, I didn't know Michael Jackson, but Anna Nicole Smith, I did know. Her um, her death experience, I actually lived, and I told you the story. I won't reiterate on it, but you know, I had to have John take pictures of me because I literally thought I was dead, okay? I thought, yes, Pluto went direct on the 11th. Fucking Pluto, Jesus. That's when I had my tooth pulled. I think it's two weeks ago now, though. Um, but I literally lived, I've lived people's deaths. Okay. Yeah. She did haunt my house. She locked Keith out of his room. Keith kept climbing up on the roof and this woman is locking me. He saw her. I had clients that saw her in the living room, scared a cameraman out of my, out of my living room. That's honest God truth. I literally lived her death experience and could not stop telling people like it was bizarre. 
my friend at the time was like dealing with her brother who was dying in the hospital. And she was like, stop calling me. I'm going to run off the, she was driving back and forth from LA to wherever her brother was. And I would be calling her freaking out with this. And I even walked in front of traffic. I was on Sunset Boulevard going to the hospital and I walked out in front of traffic. And she said to me, you're going to get fucking killed and pulled me back. And I said, but I'm already dead. I thought I could walk through the cars. I literally thought I was dead. That is a parallel universe, I think. Um, I'm not sure. And this is so weird, okay? This is so fucking weird. This weekend, John and I were coming down the mountains and, you know, all the cars are going up, right? All the cars are going up. No, I, I think I was living simultaneously in two different time frames. I think literally she was going to die that way and I was living it, prior to. So that would be precognition to get the information ahead of time. Um, yeah, the skies. Yeah, that's fun, Eric. Good for you. Um, so just this weekend, we were driving home and we coming down the mountain road and there was a motorcycle and a car coming up the road. And John and I both ducked like this and I turned the car wheel like this. And he's like, shit, I thought there was a second car. We both saw a second car. There literally was a timeline change behind the car and we were going into a different timeline. So there was another car behind that car in a kind of different, it was a timeline jump and we jumped back out of it, but we both saw it. Now that's weird because I see shit like that, but he saw it and he reacted to it and I reacted to it thinking the second car was coming from behind the scenes, right? Like behind that first car, the motorcycle, the car. And then we thought another car was pulling out to pull in front. So somehow we got crossed in a timeline, right? Wait, in case nobody cares about her, I don't know. Let's see. Yes, we are between eclipses. Yes, it was so weird. Yes, the skipping of time. Um, no idea how to protect yourself against narcissistic people, none whatsoever except don't deal with them <laughs> or don't listen to them. <laughs> Definitely eclipse season and it's on the Libra Aries axis. So absolutely. Um, yeah, that's exactly But I'm saying. Usually John doesn't like agree with my delusions as we're dri <laughs> driving. <laughs> but he ducked and I ducked and I just turned the wheel like this to try. I would have hit the side of the mountain, but I was trying to avoid the car turn pulling out. So yeah, so the, it's so I jump in and out of timelines. I do jump in and out of them anyway, but yeah, it was kind of interesting. No, I haven't tried to do that. I haven't tried to read Lizzie Borden. Yeah, hi, Mew says hi, but it was weird, okay? It was like weird. Well, you know what happened for me during the eclipse? So interesting because, of course, it's on Aries Libra. Nothing really happened except... Can you train to, uh, is that you've either got it or you don't. I believe you're born with it. I, everybody has intuition. Obviously, if, you, if you're if you awake as a human being, you should have a sixth sense. Like, you may ignore it, but you should have something that makes the hair stand up on your back. Or, you know, like when you go in a dark alley, you put your little spidey senses up so no one pulls you wherever. Um, the ability for mediumship in my understanding is not trainable unless you already have it. I've astral projected since I was a small child. I've astral projected my whole life. So has Jason and so has, um, Keithy. I've left my body since my, those are my earliest, earliest, earliest. Oh, a blue banjo. How cool. Those are my earliest memories of being out of body and hearing people talk all the time. Um, it was never a problem. Sometimes I get out of my body and I'm not even trying to. That's a genetic thing, a predisposition, I believe. Um, for you to be able to, not everybody has that, okay? Not everybody has that. Um, third eye, yeah, they don't teach you to do that. That's correct. Mediumship is a certain harnessing of energy. So, and little kids can do it or they can't. So I don't think you can teach a grown up how to do it unless they already have it. Okay, so I every time I go out of my body when I'm in an altered state running, so when I'm exhausted, I fly out and I will usually like trip fall or something. 
Um, when I'm asleep and I'm out of my body, I'm literally elsewhere. As a teenager, young teenager, 13, 14, 12, not even a teenager, um, I used to call up friends and tell them to leave something on their dresser, like leave this cup on your dresser and I'll leave something on mine. You try to come and see what I left and I'll try to come and see what you left. We used to play that game. So when I used to talk to people out of body all the time, all the time, okay? Uh, I see this. And Neptune opposed Mars. Moon would be like, um, and Cancer Venus. <laughs> pretty aggressive. Pretty aggressive, pretty sad, and pretty empathic. Um, what is humanism? I have no idea. Being human? Not sure. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what being human is. Humanism is. Let's look it up, y'all, because my phone's up here. Let's look up what is human being humanism. And I'm not sure what it is. What is human? I haven't visited other planets, but I've heard people talking. I've seen them on the astral level. After Keith died, I kept trying to connect with Keith, and I kept ending up in a restaurant in Chicago, which sounds really fucking weird. But I ended up in, like, the, like second floor, fifth floor, whatever, with a view of the city in Chicago, a fine dining restaurant. And there was a guy I would see, and he would notice me, or he'd feel me, and I was watching him eat dinner with his girlfriend or wife or whatever. Um, used to leave my body as a child. Lucid dreaming. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Me either. Ask Olympia Dukakis. Okay, I don't know why she's in this conversation. <laughs> okay, what is humanism? <laughs> I don't know, but we're looking it up, y'all. Humanism, an outlook or system of thought attaching prime importance to human rather than the divine, supernatural. Oh, human, human, humanism means to ground, probably atheist or agnostic would be in line with humanism, that kind of thing. Yeah, he wasn't, he was a handsome guy, but he, he had a girlfriend or wife or fiance. And I just remember the glasses and it was like a two top table and they had a lovely view of the city. I knew it was Chicago, familiar with it, so I knew it. And it was really pretty. It wasn't winter time. It was kind of like summer. And yeah, I know you do, Eric. Thank you. I send them right back. Um, oh, that's so nice that that's them talking to you. Um, yeah, beautiful city. I mean, not beautiful crime, but beautiful city. So in order to actually, uh, I had a psychic dream since I was, a, yeah, psychic dreams or precognition. So, yes, I can see auras. Do I usually see auras? No. The one thing I never knew about was, um, I think it's photosynthesis. I hope I'm saying that right. I'm probably not, probably not saying that right. But it's the ability to see colors and to read the colors. So, to see the aura, I guess, or to hear a name of a person and associate it with a color and to be able to read the color. Okay, so, like, if you see this, that color means this. I think it's, I think that's what... Uh, when you're putting your Christmas tree. I'm not putting up a Christmas tree. I'm not doing anything the government tells me to do. Mm -mm. Not doing it. Deja vu means you're on the correct timeline. Like you've already been down the road. I'm not going to be doing a Christmas tree. No, I would never do it before Thanksgiving. When I used to do Christmas trees, maybe around Keith's birthday, like the 18th of December, and I take it down the day after Christmas. Did I get yelled at for that? Yes. Did I get yelled at for having a fake tree over a real tree? Yes, because they wanted the real tree. But it's me that had to put it up and me that had to take it down and me that had to decorate it. So when I have to do the work, bitch, move out of my way. I'm going to do it the best way I can and you're going to fucking deal with it. Why are you killing trees anyway? We did a couple of real trees. Um, and I had a great tree for like 12 years. Then I got rid of that. Then I got an $80 tree at Walmart and put it together, a fake tree. I'm not doing any trees because I, I guess I'm going to have to for the grandbaby, but I'm not doing it because the government tells us to do it. And it's not real what they're telling us. All of the celebration is bullshit. They mixed up all the days and they do all kinds of fucking shit like this. It's ridiculous. So no. Um, yeah. Well, you know, I don't know what you guys are talking about, but yeah, I don't believe in anything. Any date they give us or any time they tell us, I... Synthesis, Synth you said it right, Zen Meadows. Yes, oh, Zen Meadows, like baby metal. Synthesis, synthesis. That's it. I said photosynthesis. That's plants. I said it completely wrong. 
that's the one ability I didn't know about. So I used to know somebody who had that ability and that's how I learned about that ability. That was something that was not in my familiarness, if you will. Um, yeah, pre-lit fake tree. Like why should I kill myself decorating shit for a false holiday that doesn't mean anything? Because the government just locks the, the government locks our calendar up so we slaves on earth and we are slaves. Now that's what I wanna tell you about new age. New age and toxic positivity. Oh, I'm always going to give them the benefit of the doubt. Oh, I'm always going to be their friend. Oh, I'm always going to choose to see people this way. When you do that, okay, and like you can co-create anything you want. No, the fuck you can't. That is a lie. We have the ability to respond to whatever we want in any way we want. So like if you yell at me, I can respond to you. I can smile. I can hug you. I can kiss you, I can throw a ball at your head, whatever, I can run you over with the car. I can respond to you in any way. But just because you're not a millionaire and you don't have a car and you don't have this and you don't have that and you're trying to do it doesn't mean you're co-creating wrong, okay? No, that's not true. That is a lie. And they tell you that to make you feel like you fail. So if you're not running around Oh, I choose to see love. Well, here's a little note for y'all, okay? So love is the most important thing. If you do not love yourself, as in you cannot express yourself authentically, do you know how many people steal from other people, take from other people, take their husbands, take their wives, take their ideas, take their businesses, steal their cars, their wallets, their kids, everything, and then preach that they love, that's not love because you yourself don't love yourself enough to stand there basically naked, whether you have this or you don't have that, and just stand there as yourself. So the way to elevate your energy is really through being authentic. Whoever you are, be whoever you are. So if you're in the closet, come out. If you, if you don't like vegans, say it. If you like vegans, Say that, whatever. Be yourself. If you want to shave your head and write fuck you on your head, do that. If you want to grow your hair long and wear a wig, do that. If you're a man, you want to do this, do this. If you're a woman, you want to do that, do that. But do not hide behind love of all people because what that is is manipulation. So when people refuse to see the actions of others for what they are because it benefits them, so they say they're going to see, see the person positively. I choose to see the good. You can do that once or twice, but at a certain point you're manipulating because you're getting something out of it. So you're not authentic. So you're not being loving. That's just not a loving thing to do. A loving thing to do is to see the person for exactly what they are. Acknowledge it, right? Oh my God. I know, right? Acknowledge it. So if the person's a thief, a crackhead, a prostitute, a banker, whatever. Okay a dumbass, whatever they are. So you choose to see them that way. You don't put a spin on it for your own benefit. Oh no, I, I choose to see the good. I try to love them. No, no, no. See them for who they are. I choose to acknowledge from a detached position who they are, who they are. Not who you want them to be, not how you want to manipulate them because it's easier for you to manipulate them than to acknowledge who they are, okay? Don't do that. Be authentic. Get your own ideas. Get your own personality. Do your own shit. Stay true to who you are. Stop copying other people. And um, what is it? Imitation is not the highest form of flattery. That is an outright fucking lie. It's not. It's because you don't have a sense of self or you wouldn't have to copy someone else. If you have a sense of self, be yourself, whatever the fuck that is, okay? Whether you want to wear your pajamas to work in the morning, which I personally want to do <laughs> outside. Yes, comparison is a killer. It's horrible. Stop. Authenticity is the highest form of love. I love you because you're just you. I understand that you're a fucking asshole or you're a thief or you're a crackhead or you're a jackass or you're a whatever, 
but I choose to love you because I see you for who you are and I don't try to change you and I don't put a spin on it in order to manipulate the situation. So a lot of these people and, you know, so we'll talk about, um, I just blanked on her name now. You know who I mean? <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> like read my mind. Oh my God. And I love her. I've been listening to her for 30, 30 years. What is her name? Um, Y'all know who I mean. Uh, she's older. She channels a whole bunch of people. She talks about co-creation all the time. Co-creation. Uh, and I'm going to say this the fuck again. A three-year-old raped child is not co-creating that. When they tell you, no, not Dolores Cannon. It's the other one that's still living. Do you know who I mean? <laughs> Fuck, I can't think of her name. Oh my God, she's a brunette woman. She had a husband. They worked together. She still tours. She's like Abraham Hicks. Thank you. Years ago, 38, 39 years ago, when she started, when she started going out public, I started reading her books and all of that. And she talks about Esther Hicks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Abraham Hicks. Thank you. It just blanked out of my mind. She talks about co creation. Now, I agree with things she says, and nobody's going to be able to give lectures on spirituality and talk and understand everything they are not because we are not like we're how would you know you can be the best doctor in the world you can do thousands of surgeries and still not get everyone right right that's just the way it is that's called being human we're not perfect and we're not machines but when she talks about co-creation okay when you talk about co-creation you have to understand i may want this for myself and I may do everything to get this. And there could be six other people over here not wanting me to have that. And therefore, getting in my way, stealing my shit, doing my things, calling the cops on me, blowing up my house, whatever it is, right? <laughs> I hate her voice, Kristen. Kristen's like, I fucking hate that woman. <laughs> um, I know another Gma was a psychic for high profile people. Yeah, well, it happens. But hi from France. But but what I'm saying to you is, no matter what you do, right? No matter, that's what I'm saying to each his home, to each his own. But what I'm saying is the highest form of love. And, and God bless it. You do not have that much control over your life to fucking create everything in your life. Or every mother of a dead child would not have a dead child, eating husband or a runaway child or an infertile womb, or a loss of money, or a damaged house, or uh, any kind of cancer, like, or tooth problems for that matter, okay? Just because something happens to you does not mean you willed it into your life. You created it. What the hell is that? So you're going to blame me for everything that's happened in my life. That's what you're going to do, okay? That's what you're going to do. You're going to fucking blame me for absolutely everything and say I'm completely responsible for every shitty thing that's happened to me in my life or happened to you or whatever it is. However, you're not taking into account that there are fated events, fated, okay, and there's karma or whatever, balance, and that in between those very, like a child dying, a child being born, people being married, those are very fated things. I don't think you can block them really. <clears throat> Everything else in between that is up to, yes, yes, thank you. Everything, wait. Um, sorry, somebody just messaged me. I was reading it. Um, there you go. So that's what I'm saying. If you could truly create, you wouldn't have your loved ones suffer. You just wouldn't. Why would you? They say there's free will, but is there free will? There's free will in how you respond. So if you run over my foot on the street, I can cuss you out. I can go to the hospital. I can get your license plate and phone the, the you know, police on you and file a hit and run. I can jump on your car window after you drive off my foot and smash it in with my fist. I don't know that I could do that actually strong-wise. I can throw a rock at your car. I can jump in front of you and make you stop or you hit me. I have a choice 
in how I respond. And that's what they're talking about with free will. You do not have free will in as much as what other people choose to do in the line of your action. Like you are walking. If somebody choose, oops, somebody chooses to impede your walk, your free will does not fucking matter. It matters what that person's doing. And sometimes they do something which takes you careening in that way. I don't pretend to know and understand it. Pure kidnapping here. You know, I don't even pertain to understand what the hell is going on. But you don't have as much control over everything that you do that you think. So those new age things teach you if you just think this, it can happen. Oh, thank you. Yeah, my Jasmine does my nails. Jasmine, I've known her since she was a young woman. And now she is 48. She just had a birthday. I've known her since she was young, like 25 years. Um, she was in one of my videos, my psychic mom video way, way back. Anyway, um, you don't have that kind of control. Human beings, I have no control over anything. Nothing, just how I respond. When Keith died, I had no control. No control, no control. I did have control how I chose to respond to that extremely vicious experience, okay? And it was fucking vicious. So I had control over that. Aaron Hernandez is a good one. That's the only thing I had control over. Do I beat the shit out of someone? Do I shoot up on heroin? Do I get drunk night and day? Do I punch a cop out? Do I fucking set fire? What do I do to get rid of the way I feel? I chose how I would respond. I made a conscious choice to respond. That's it. That's the only control I had. I could not bring Keith back. I could not do anything to stop what had happened. I could not do anything to make anybody who loved Keith feel better or different. I only had choice of how I responded. Therein lies your free will. Each day you are put with circumstances that are completely out of your choice. Yes, disassociated. Abs of course you were. It's devastating and I'm sorry for that. So you have choice in how you respond. But just because you sit there and you want to be a fucking billionaire <laughs> and, you know, just because you want to be, and that's the mistake I made when I was younger. And all those people who wouldn't pick a side, those fucking people who say, no, nah, I'm not going to be mad at that person. But they hurt a child. Well, I know, but because it suits them. Manipulation. Pick a fucking side. Or don't pick any side, but don't defend. You see what I'm saying? So people got to get real. So the highest form of love is self-love towards the self. Then you're able to minister love to other people and if you love yourself, you're going to be authentically who you are, not who your mother wants you to be, not who your father wants you to be, not who your husband, wife, brother, cousin, uncle, or friends want you to be, not who the PTA wants you to be, not who your job wants you to be, but you're going to be who you are, always authentic. And that shows respect for self, period. Once you do that, then you can raise your vibration because people always ask me how to raise your vibration. Being authentically you in the way that God created you, whatever that is, not hiding, not anything, okay? None of that. You know what I mean? No idea, Beth, none. No idea. Couldn't even tell you, can't even, can't even tell you. Can't even believe we had two children die in our family. I remember John saying, I remember John saying to me, because Keith drove me crazy when he was a teenager. Let's not, <laughs> let's not say he didn't. Keith fucking drove me batshit crazy. So did Jason. And I remember saying to John, I can't handle these fucking kids. Like I'm leaving. They're driving me crazy. And he said, Keith is going to be a really good friend to you when you're like, when he's older and you're older, he's going to be a good boy and a good friend. And I remember holding on to that. And when Keith died, I remember thinking, why did John lie to me? Obviously John didn't lie to me. That's really what he thought. And in a way, I have a different friendship with my son now. It's an entirely different type of reaction. Um, I have no idea why he died. And I have no idea. I remember John saying, God wouldn't take two of my children. You better watch what you say. Watch what you do because it can happen to you. You are not special because it didn't happen to you because it can happen at any time. So I've learned, watch your tongue, watch your mouth, watch what you say, watch what you take. Because there's always repercussions for that. 
So try to be the best person you can. Like, that's just all I'm going to say. Um, yeah, so that's weird. But yeah, it's a spiritual friendship. It is because I do feel Keith. So yes, it happened. Mia, don't doubt it. Unless you believe we just rot in the ground. Otherwise, this stuff does happen. Yeah, they say everybody has a reason for being in your life, but that's toxic positivity because I don't think I need to meet some of the people I do. I mean, maybe I have lessons to learn. I don't understand them because the lesson I learned from my son dying is I'm in a club I don't want to fucking be in, okay? I have to live without my son and the only lesson I can think is I don't fucking like this place. So that's how every parent of a child that's died feels, to one degree or another, they don't want to fucking be here. So like the lesson is, you know, I don't know. Um, so I don't know. I don't know. Like, I, I like the cocaine, eh? <laughs> Jimmy, I had a different kind. Jimmy always showed up physically to me. But I don't think we're all here for a fucking reason. I don't think, I mean, it may be a little reason. There can be reasons. Yes, I don't think we're all here for that. I just don't believe that. This place is not a good place. This place is a piece of garbage place. What we're learning, I don't know what we're learning. <laughs> I don't know. They're, they're trying to kill us is what we're learning. Maybe we're here to get off this planet and go to another one, okay? Yes, right? I believe we're kidnapped. That is my personal belief. Wasn't always my belief. When Jimmy died, I always thought there was a reason. But then I'm looking and I'm like, what is the fucking reason? What is the fucking reason? Okay, what is the reason? Why did my Keith go? I understand why he went, but I don't know why. And what I can tell you is sometimes the actions of person A to person B to person C to person D, this person gets it when it was meant for that. A lot of people shapeshift their energies and... Other people scapegoated. Sometimes it's scapegoated energy. Look what people do in their families. I don't know what to say. I don't know what the reason is. <laughs> I don't know what the reason is. You know, um, I mean, we all, you, you can help people in your life. You can be a good person. Um, you can do, it's a total slave planet. Look what we do. We all get ready like a bunch of fucking zombies. Oh, it's Christmas. Let me buy presents and put a tree up. Christmas not real, okay? That has nothing to do with anything. People have been talked into that. Valentine's Day. This day. She's right down here. That day. Take a day off for that. Now it's June 19th or Juneteenth or whatever it is. Shut the fuck up with that. And I don't want to celebrate Christmas. I don't want to have to deal with people and eat dinner with them and shit. What is this? <laughs> what? I don't want to buy y'all presents. They try to take your money, commercialize it, do whatever, okay? Um, yes, I should do that on Kobe as well. Um, drugs, exactly. What is this? Are we in a loop? Yes, I actually believe we are in a loop. There's fucking people. I have been so just blindsided by the way, what people say and do. Just fucking blindsided. People are such assholes and some people aren't aware of what they're doing. And I'm like, wow, you are not aware of what you just said, what you just implied, what you just did. It's so bizarre. It's so fucking bizarre. Um, yeah, we are looping. We have to be. We have to be looping. This is the biggest. I mean, it's just like I'm like, now I don't care. Now I'm like, please shoot me. When I go out in public, I'm like, maybe I die tonight. Let's get on the freeway. That's what I'm thinking. I don't want to be in an accident and live. I want to be in an accident and die. Or I want to, you know, have an issue happen and just go white right the fuck out. That's what I want. That's what I say. Like every day I roll the dice and I'm like, maybe it's fucking today. That's what it is. <laughs> maybe it's what it is. Yes. I don't know. I don't know what it is. And there's so many people... What I have found, yeah, we must be on a loop, but that doesn't say much for the existence of God. Um, but what I found is I'm really shocked. I'm really shocked at the boundaries that people will cross with me. And I'm like, yeah, I, and, and I don't even tell people now. 
I do not waste my breath telling you. Even if you ask me, did I do something? I will never fucking tell you. I will just go about my business. I don't care. <laughs> don't care. I don't care to teach you how to treat me. Don't you love that when you're in an abusive relationship? They say you teach people how to treat you. Really? Because how did I teach that man to punch me in the face? No one punched me in the face. But like those people that are in domestic violent relationships and they get murdered. What exactly on this cockamamie planet did they do to teach another person to fucking kill them? Okay. <laughs> Nothing. 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 Okay. <laughs> no, it wasn't Ellen. <laughs> what the fuck do they do to do that? Why are people saying that? Why are they saying that? It's bizarre. Oh, so what did you do? I didn't fucking do anything. I didn't do anything that way. You fucking weirdos. Um, right. Okay, there you go. Take no prisoners. What did you do to make them do that? You didn't do anything. That's weird on this planet. Well, what did you do to cause it? <laughs> How about regardless of what you do, the other person shows some decorum and not try to kill your ass, right? <laughs> anyway, I'm like, fuck. It's just, it bothers me. We've been taught such bullshit. Such bullshit. Um, yes, it's that's what they say. What did you do? How about, what did they do? Why are they reacting that way? What's fucking wrong with them? <laughs> How about that? <laughs> Whatever. Oh, well. <laughs> okay. Ugh. I can't even. I just can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. It makes me crazy. Um, it's just so, no, I don't think you did anything to cause that. I don't care if you were cheating. Just because you're cheating does not give another person a right to kill you. They do not own you. You are not a piece of cattle or property. I don't care if they care if you were cheating. <laughs> they don't own you my God, you know, they don't own you, right? Do whatever the fuck you want. The person doesn't have to live with you. They don't have to like you. They can divorce you. They can tell you to shut the fuck up. They can tell you if you do that again, I'm leaving. They can do filed charges again. They can do whatever they want, but killing you. I mean, let's be serious. Let's be serious. Let's be serious. No, it's just ridiculous. And then I now believe no good deed goes unpunished. <laughs> if you do something for somebody, they're going to fuck you over. That's all it's going to be. They're going to fuck you over. So don't do it. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I think Jesus was an Aries, possibly a Virgo. Definitely not a Capricorn, okay? I'm just saying that. Killing is a harsh punishment. You notice, you notice out there, people, you got all these idiots talking about... Uh, Jada Pinkett Smith, whatever, Tupac, whoever, whoever, all this fucking nonsense, but not one of them is standing up for traffic children. Not one. Why do we have to listen to Jada Pinkett? Mental patient. Hello, mental patient. Hello, mental patient. <laughs> uh, monarch mind controlled, okay? Why are we, yes, no good deed goes unpunished. The reason people need help is because maybe they're trying to take from you. That's why they need help. I don't know. Don't pull over and pick up a hitchhiker. I mean, I just think of the shit I did and I'm like, wow, you were stupid. But did you guys hear about that Alaska Airlines? Jada Patient Smith. <laughs> I don't think Jesus was a Capricorn. I'm just saying. If anything, I think he was a Virgo. He got mad at people. I know Jada's a puppet, but what are they distracting us from? Jesus got mad at people. He cussed people out. He did all kinds of things, okay? Heather, good. Don't get distracted. I think he's a Virgo. He could be a Pisces. He could be a Virgo. I don't believe Capricorn. Uh, no one cares about Jada. They keep shoving this bitch in our face everywhere, everywhere online. She's fucking shoved in our face. Listen, you bitch. What I didn't like, <clears throat> what tipped me off to her was when she talked about her grandmother telling her how to have an orgasm herself when she was nine that's a deal breaker for me. It ain't none of your business, granny, what your fucking daughter does sexually, okay? It ain't none of your business. If your 
granddaughter comes to you and says, this boy likes me, you can give her the comments, take care of yourself, don't be pressured, all of that kind of thing. But you don't have to tell her how to masturbate. Trust me, people can figure it out. That's intrusive, that's a boundary crossing, that's sexual abuse, that's wrong, that's a problem. So she comes from an MK Ultra, Monarch Mind Control, Illuminati family. Oh, drink some water. Yeah, I'm getting dehydrated. <clears throat> I drank a lot of water all day though. That was abuse, Kimberly. It's wrong. No parent should get up in their kid's sex life. Like <clears throat> if the kid asks you, you can say, here's condom. I remember throwing condoms in my kid's room. But other than that, I'm not having a conversation. I told the young women, don't go up there. Leave the door open. You need to not let boys shut you in their bedroom with the door shut. So, you know, that. But other than that, I'm not going to tell them how to have sex. Child grooming, exactly. It's disgusting. And so, <clears throat> now you can hear this. Right. She said she was nine. So she comes from that. So we're looking at a mind-controlled puppet on TV. And they keep shoving it down our throats. Shoving it. Shoving it. No one cares. Turn it off. Um... Yeah, I don't know about that, Randy. I don't know about that. The only, uh, the only thing my husband said to go to the bots was, oh, I don't even know what that means. All right, you guys. Oh, my God. Yes, I think Tupac was under mind control, too. I don't think you're going to get to any level of fame unless you are mind controlled, honestly. Will was having Chrome withdrawal. Well, <laughs> Yeah, they all have it. When you realize what these people do to get what they're doing and you and you realize it, you're like, yeah, I want nothing to do with that. Yes, he was from a family. His mother was a Black Panther. That's Illuminati family. What the fuck do you think they put Black Panther? There would be no issue between black and white people if the government didn't set it up. If the government didn't put all the poison out there. If the government didn't sell cigarettes, sell booze, sell weed. Why do you think the government does that? To cause chaos. Uh, they say it's it's like speed, so you don't sleep, it ages you backwards, you get everything done, et cetera, et cetera. I get a little bit of a feeling it's like meth, but a good kind of meth if there is such a thing. But then you get stiff people person disease, stiff person people disease, <laughs> whatever that is. Um, oh, Jada admitted she was a gold digger. I don't know. She's got more money than most. I mean... Yeah I, yeah, I don't know if she's a gold digger. I mean, it's possible. I think she's fucking stupid. That's what I think. And MS. The MS I've noticed in a lot of the people, and some of them used to sit at my table for readings. Some very famous women have MS now, and they used to come as clients. And they were kind of indoctrinated into the industry early on, and I do think the MS is a little bit of the chrome problem with the brain. Um, so that, that's what I think. I'm just really suspect of it. Like, why the fuck is your body breaking down like that? That's all. Not everybody, but some, some I see. Yeah. So <laughs> you're funny. Lupus. I don't know about lupus. Not sure about that. Scientology harvesting fear. Exactly. So I don't care. I don't care. Oh, this ear is still this. Oh my God. Anyway, I slept on it last night. Some people have MS. I mean, MS is a thing. They poison us a lot too. They poison our food. They poison our everything. I haven't had Starbucks in over a month. Just car coffee. That's right. Okay, you guys. Um, <clears throat> race divide. Absolutely. It's related to the shot. People are getting MS. Oh, it could very well be. How do they invest? How do they invest Chrome? Oh, ingest. I think they shoot it up or drink it. I'm really not sure. Not sure. I'm sure it's a drug, therefore they take it like you could snort it, smoke it, drink it. Car coffee's a new thing. Oh, I'm sorry you have lupus. Um, yeah, I think most of us are going to get something because they poison everything. Everything. Cocaine. Cocaine's a problem too. John Stamos, again, heard about the behind the scenes with him. Doesn't, doesn't stand at attention. All right. I'm out of here before I open my mouth. Okay, bye, you guys. <laughs> bye, you guys. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Have a good night, y'all.